like yesterday But it was long ago Jane, it was lovely, she was a queen of my night There in the darkness with the radio Playing low end And the secrets that we share The mountains that we move Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We will be starting in five minutes. Against 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage David Cretney, MHK, Department of Economic Development Political Member with responsibility for motorsport. Antenna open out into New York Somewhere in all that talk is all the answers And oh my giddy and New York and talk Hello, sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Villa Marina for the official launch of the 2014 Isle of Man TT races, fueled by Monster Energy. My welcome is not only to all the people who've joined us here tonight, but also to TT fans worldwide, watching live via the Isle of Man TT YouTube channel. Last year, over 24 million people watched TT highlights on the television and a further 43 million watched YouTube clips. I'm delighted to be back involved officially in an event that has been my sport and passion all my life. In particular, at a time when due to so much hard work by so many has seen TT popularity rocketing with new TV broadcasters signing multi-year deals and new sponsors joining the, those confirming their long-term commitment to this great event. The TT now generates over two million pounds of commercial income which is invested back into it to secure its long-term future and offset the costs of running the event. As always, on behalf of us all, I would like to put on record my thanks for the marshals, the medics, the volunteers, officials, and government departments who all work to make this great event happen. So please join with me in thanking them. <clears throat> Worldwide and at the event, fans are able to follow the races through live timing and Manx radio commentary via the internet. IsleMantTT.com had over 2 million unique users last year, the majority of which were obviously during practice and TT weeks. And what races we have in prospect for 2014? A mouth-watering assembly of the world's finest road racers, some of whom you'll be meeting shortly. 11 different manufacturers, many factory-supported efforts with new teams adding variety and excitement. In 41 days' time, on the 24th of May, our heroes will be lining up on Glen Crutchery Road at the road racing capital of the world. Bring it on, let's have fun. Welcome to the launch of the 2014 Isle of Man TT Races, fueled by Monster Energy.
please welcome onto the stage your host for this evening, Mr. Gethin Jones. Crawling back to you. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Nice to see you. I can't see you at the back, but are you there? Yeah. You been drinking? That's the problem. <laughs> Welcome one and all. It's lovely to see so many of you here to this fantastic uh, event. Uh, it's lovely to see so many of you here at the Villa Marina. But just quickly, can I also say hello to everyone? around the world watching on the web. Great to see you, enjoy the ride. My name is Gethin Jones and I'll be your guide this evening as we look forward to another mouth-watering event. We've got a fantastic night ahead of us. Very shortly, we'll be wheeling up motorcycle royalty onto these sofas. That's a lot of men on not that big sofas. It could get interesting. Ladies, you might have to help me out. We shall see. Also, we'll be chatting to some rookies as they prepare for their first ever race here. Um, and also, we'll be chatting to a music industry legend about his TT plans. A little bit of a warning. Should be interesting a bit later. But before we do any of that, let's get you in the mood. Let's take a look at some of the action from last year and what action there was. Sacrifice. Withhold no sacrifice. Grudge no toil. Grudge no toil. Seek no sordid gain. Seek no sordid gain. Fear no foe. Fear no foe. And all will be well. And all will be well. And this bird you cannot change. And this bird you can never change. I know I can't change. Lord knows I can't change. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed, some <laughs> there were indeed some seriously good races last year. And a big thank you to North One for those fantastic pictures and putting us in the mood. Uh, now then, ladies and gents, uh, to talk you through everything you need to know over the next couple of weeks. And although the champagne at the moment is on ice, to find out who will be spraying it come the TT races. Uh, I want to introduce you to two names that have become synonymous with TT racing. First up, a motorsport legend on two wheels and four. He's a commentator and a world-class joker. And he's joined by a man who epitomizes the spirit of these races, I think, with his bravery and commitment. His name is James, and he's got the wit to match. Please welcome onto the stage, Steve Parrish and James Whitten. Sit on my lap, or we well, wanted to sit very close to you. Is that right? Would you yeah. like us over there yeah. or here? Go over there. Right, we'll go over here. What's the old that? Like, can I just apologise to the uh, transport minister for nicking the batteries out of his mic because I needed them for my electric tools. Well, sorry, sorry yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It was your. Fault. We do apologise about that. So That's anyway, right. take a seat. We're, Thank you. This is awkward, isn't it? If I go this low, I might not get up again. But yeah. there you, go. <laughs> you can lie down if you want. Uh, now, ladies and gents, how did you get here tonight? Did you walk? Some of you walk? Yeah. No one walked. Wow. Uh, anyone get the car? Yeah? You don't have to scream about that, Lev. You know, just say yes. That's fine. Um, these two, how did you get here? Uh, we came over in my plane. I picked yeah. up James. Oh, I've got a plane. Plummet Airways. Well, ha yeah, Plummet Airways. Yeah. It's, our slogan is the fastest way to heaven. Thank, thanks for the lift. Yeah, well, you, you're a southerner. I swam from Blackpool. Uh, can I have a lift home, maybe? That would be nice. It depends. It's quite expensive, actually. It's not cheap, <laughs> is it? You know. might be sitting on the wing. Hey, lots of people do anything to get here for TT races, of course. Why is it so special for you? Well, I think that short clip just said it all. If your hairs didn't stand up on the back of your neck after watching that, you need to go down to A&E or see your doctor or something like that. It is absolutely unique. Uh, there is nothing like it in the world. It is the biggest test of man and machine that can ever be, and that sort of says it, I think. Yeah, not just a, a physical test of man and machine, but a mental test of the rider as well. More than any other circuit, you're riding down at sea level, you're up at two and a half, three thousand feet, you've got every kind of road surface, you've got manholes to avoid, you've got uh, bumpy bits of the track, smooth bits, and it's just a, a unique place to ride. There's nowhere else like it in the world. Not only that, you couldn't do it anywhere else in the world. And, and, just, and it's not just the riders, for the spectators as well. There's nowhere else in the world that you can watch anything like it. Just to pick up on that a little bit, because um, there is a lot of um, comparing and contrasting with sort of track racing and the road racing, but it's such a different experience when you're racing around the Isle of Man. Yeah, completely uh, different approach. Different bike setup, just about everything's different now. Going back 30 or 40 years, it wasn't. You were riding the same bikes and it was a kind of same mindset. Now it's completely different. The two, the two have diverged. Uh, and the approach uh, for a rider is well, I mean, there's people who would only race here if they could. They'd just come to the Isle of Man. It's just the biggest challenge. And like I said, for me, um, and when I speak to the rider, it's mostly the mental challenge that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, who are you excited about for the racing? Who do you think is favourite? Well, remember, remember we have, they're here we and they're within had this punching discussion range. And it's possibly the, the biggest depth of field we've ever seen this year. 
There is so many great riders out there. There's so many potential winners out there. There's so many manufacturers of motorcycles that can win out there. But we know the guys that uh, are going to be out there, which is obviously the guys riding these two bikes here, John McGuinness, and, of course, Michael Dunlop. Going and it wins. just goes on and on. Yeah. Hutchie's back. That's terrific. Josh Brooks is getting faster and faster. It really is fantastic. Yeah, for me, i would be looking forward to seeing, after three years off a bike, um, if Fucci has, has got what it takes still, he thinks he has, and I'm fairly sure he has. He's, there's no more, more determined than Ian Hutchinson. Uh, Keith Amos back, good mate of mine. I'm, I'm glad to see that. Um, and a, a lot of the races are really difficult to call. Michael Dunlop's on a different bike. That's a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure he wouldn't agree with me. Yeah. Uh, but there is uh, lots to get excited about, and, and it's, it is a difficult one to call, like Steve says, big depth of field. And just wait for the cheer. Maybe Guy Martin. <laughs> I think it's because you asked for it a little bit, Steve. Um, there's no doubt that this is the most unique motorsport race in the world. It's been going since 1907, so much history behind it. And actually, it's becoming a little bit more commercially big, if you like. And just recently, ITV has signed a deal to show it for five years. That's a TT. Same with Discovery Velocity in the US, three-year deal with Fox in Australia. Yet it's still got that kind of local feel to it, isn't it? It's got that local feel that everyone wants to come and feel because I travel around the world with my job and if I'm in Australia, if I'm in America or wherever, people want to come up and talk about the TT. They've seen Grand Prix, they've seen domestic superbike championships and everything else, but when they watch this on TV, they can't believe they are actually, it happens, so they have to get on a plane and come over. And each year it gets bigger and bigger and there's more Americans, and there's more Australians, and there's more Japanese, and, and sooner or later we're going to have to shore up this island. <laughs> we're going to have to put an extension on it. <laughs> Make more land, I think. Yeah, I think it's a bit of everything. I mean, the races run brilliantly now. There's new people coming every year to the TT as, as far as riders go. But also the TV coverage has got bigger and going out in more countries. In fact, I was chatting with a guy in the hotel behind reception and he said he can tell in the year when the TT goes out in different countries. It doesn't just go out live, it goes out throughout the year and throughout the winter. And he says he knows when it's going out in, say, Australia or New Zealand because they get a lot of bookings and people wanting to book on from that country. So it is, that's having a massive effect as well. Uh, but I think they use their own commentators, don't they? Obviously, they never understand me <laughs> down there, would they? Always on the scab, aren't you? It's funny you should mention about the worldwide appeal because it's exactly what we've got the cameras here tonight. And uh, actually, we really want you to get involved this evening. Have you all got Twitter? Have you all got your phones with you? Can you all follow me so you can double my followers? That's not why I'm asking, actually. Uh, we've got a Twitter feed up here, at IOM underscore TT. If you get on that, what we'd love you to do is get your questions into the riders as the night goes on. So get on your Twitter, at IOM underscore TT. And one other bit of business, which is really important. You've got your tickets on you, right? You've got your stubs. You'll see on your stubs a number. Make sure you've got that number, because someone tonight is going to win. It's quite an incredible prize. Well, it's it? hosp two hospitality packages worth, I don't know, a thousand a pound a piece. It's a, a, li a lap in the course car, which I'm going to be driving. No, I'm not. But anyway, <laughs> um, but there's a lap in the course car. It's, you know, it's, it's the best, best package you can ever have here at the Isle of Man. It is a dream. So somebody here tonight is going to go away with two, two of those hospitality you're packages. You're looking now, yeah. So make sure you've got yeah. your ticket, make sure you've got your stub, and make sure you've got that number. That's the all-important number you'll need a bit later on. Okay. Let's get on with it. It's time to get our first three riders onto the stage this evening. Three of them with a combined... They're all looking for their stubs. You're looking for your stubs. You found them. They're rummaging around in the bins at the moment. I think you have. Our first three guests have a combined age of 127 years. About the same as you. About the same as us too, actually, say, yeah. You're two-thirds of that, though, aren't you? Oh, You're only as old as the woman you feel. <laughs> but don't let that kid you, because these guys are fast. First up, Michael Rutter, who's won the TT Zero the last three years. Nine times winner, Bruce Anstey. And comeback kid, if you like, Keith Amore. Welcome them to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing, boys? Hey, we're talking about age. Someone's selling a, celebrating a birthday on Friday, aren't they, Michael? Yeah, use a mic. That sometimes helps. Yeah, I'm afraid so, yeah. Um, 21? Well, 38 now. 30, plus that. <laughs> plus VAT. Um, you're looking well, though, really. Is it, is it the Bathams? I 
have actually been um, doing a bit of training this year, so uh, I've made a bit of an effort. Oh, you're doomed then, if you start training after all these years. Well, you know, um, obviously I had a hard time last year with um, the Honda Legends team. I had two of the awful riders in the world, really. <laughs> they, they, they picked on me a lot, and uh, yeah, basically I'm just sick of them, really. So um, I'm glad to get rid of them and, uh, and uh, move on. And what is your training regime? I can't tell you that. It's a Come secret. on, you can tell us. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't made it up yet. Are you? Uh, you you're in. The, you actually go into a gym. I have been going to the gym actually. To be fair, I've been trying to do a bit because um, obviously I'm getting older now and it's uh, getting hard work. And you know, I don't end up like John. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting older, but you're still getting quicker. You posted you a couple of 130 mile an hour plus laps in the senior last year. Um, you with BMWs this time, uh, same back as you'll be racing in BSB and a triumph in the Supersport race. Yeah, we're real lucky we've got the Bathams uh, BMW and uh, Smith's Triumph. Uh, you know, two real good bikes, you know, we don't know how the BMW is going to go around here. Um, hopefully it's going to go as well as what we think it's going to do, but uh, we'll soon find out soon. Mate, are you, are you a bit disappointed you're not riding the TT0 this year? Yeah, definitely, you know, we want to be out there, but obviously Michael sees it very well and you know, uh, you know, it's more important he gets better or tries to get better so, uh, you know, we can come back next year and uh, have a go at trying to uh, win again. And at least uh, John McGuinness will have a chance of winning it this year, won't he? Well, you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got a hard, um, you know, he's got a couple of other people out there which, uh, you know, you've got to let John win one of them because, you know, he starts crying otherwise. <laughs> Keith, can I, can I read a quote of yours from a few years ago? <laughs> no, it's a clean one. Keith. Because of my ongoing injury problems, I've decided to retire completely. What the hell are you doing here? How do you answer that? <laughs> um, the truth? Yeah, I guess I couldn't stay away. Unfinished business. Um, it's Ryan Farquhar's fault. Really. He's the one that like, talked me into it. He didn't actually talk me into it. He sent me a message on Facebook. Asked me if I wanted to um, ride again. Why didn't you just go for a race on your local track, though? You know, you've got to make a big fuss about it in front of everyone, haven't you? Well, it's hardly the same thing as it's racing around here. <laughs> well, it That's is your true. local track now, of course. Yeah, I'm a Castletown resident now, so I'm kind of officially, uh, well, I'm anxious, I guess. And did you, did you pass all the exams to get in here? What exams? <laughs> oh, you obviously haven't checked that out then. <laughs> no, definitely not. Are you looking forward to getting around this track again? It's, uh, it's been a while, and are you excited? Are you nervous about it? How do you feel? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, it's... Specialist place, it's, there's nothing else like it anywhere on the planet, so coming back to race here is it's a big thing. It was a big decision to make, but I'm glad I've yeah, made that decision. I can't wait to get back out there. You're not riding the big class, but to me, you always look more at home on the super sport bike. We've seen your brake lap records on that, and some of the onboard stuff from two or three years ago was uh, fantastic. Some of the best racing we've ever seen around here for me. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I kind of had a long think about it, and after Ryan said he would have come and race a Super Twin, it's, it's probably as close to the Super Sport bike as I'm going to get. And um, I don't know how strong my shoulder is going to be yet. So I thought the best thing to do was just concentrate on the two little bikes this year. And if I'm strong enough, uh, we'll have a go next year on the bigger bikes. Last year, you were a rider liaison officer, telling everyone the lines, probably including Josh Brooks. You won't be doing that now, then? Definitely not, Josh. You've seen how fast he's going. I have, yeah. yeah. You probably told him how to. I just told him not to break himself in the first lap. <laughs> Bruce, new colour scheme, looks great with the Paget team. You're talking yeah, about no. the shoes? Hang on. You, is that no, I'm not talking about the oh, shoes, right. no. I've seen better dressed wounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bruce, so terrific new sponsor. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. We've got our new um, Valvelings on board this year, so no, really looking forward to it. Clive, Paget team again. This is my fourth year with, with Clive, and everything's been going really well. And, New bikes are looking really good, so looking forward to it. You were out of sorts a little bit in 2013. You had some kind of flu bug going on. You still performed. You didn't look like you were going to do. You looked a kind of bit, a bit grey. You looked ill, but you still performed. You must be looking forward to a year when you're going to be fully fit. And yeah, it, last year I was probably the fittest I've ever been. I was really looking forward to it. And then yeah, I got be, that, before the event, yeah. Yeah, and then I got that. It was like, um, I don't know what it was, some sort of bug, like um chest infection and it just, it just took, me, took my strength away really bad and like, I struggled but I was still, I was still surprised how, how well I did so I was pleased. It's probably the weather at the Northwest 200 actually. 
I know that's why I tell everybody that every time I go to Northwest, I get a cold there just in time to come to the Isle of Man. So, so we're going to see you walking around with those face masks on like the Japanese wear now this year. <laughs> uh, Bruce, um, one thing I was interested in, when you first started racing here, you said the goal ultimately was just to get around, survive, be safe. Things have changed a lot since then. You've won all the international races. You're the second fastest man around here ever. What keeps you going? What's the drive to, to keep doing it? What do you love about it? Um, the biggest thing is still enjoying it. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I'm still at the sharp end, and I'm still capable of, of winning races. So, is, is, you, is there a favourite part of the course you like as well? Is it in particular? Is... No, everybody's sort of. I've had a few questions like that today, and I just like. Oh, sorry, sorry for being boring. <laughs> I just say. That How just, did you answer them? Just that. Yeah. <laughs> Just the whole circuit, really. Just we've got completely different sections here and there. I just I love love the whole thing. Bruce, you're the second fastest rider around this circuit. I no. just said that. Stop yeah, making my lines. I know you did, but I was going to I was just going to ask you the question: How fast can it be? Do you think? Do you think it's going to go on this year? Yeah, I think so. I think last year the um, senior race could have been faster, but actually, for once, it was the weather was too hot, and the tyre was melting here and there. I think we should have we should have done 132 last year. So we had some good weather this year. We'll. I think we'll be doing some fast, fast, fast times this year. One thing I've found out that I've found out that uh, Michael is actually fastest man ever on one of the splits. I mean, fair enough, it is about a three-mile split. It's just from Crunk to Morning. It's the hairpin. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. That's all right, though. At least it's one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rest of the track I've got a problem with. <laughs> Have you told John McGuinness about this? Because he, I don't think he likes that. He, he knows it as well. I just say that's good. I well, at least he might buy me a drink for that later. How fast, it, though. how fast, if the bike's perfect, how fast are you going to go this year? Because I think every year you've come back, you've kind of surprised yourself about what you've been getting quicker every year. Um, it's just getting something, you know, um, what you enjoy riding and it suits you and uh, hopefully, you know, you can put it all together and put a good lap together and it's so difficult. Um, like last year we struggled a bit, but, uh, you know, if we can get a bit quicker again this year, that's all matters. If we can get in that top six again, I'll be more than happy. Well, I'll be available for you, your pit stops. If you want me doing your visor again, no problem. <laughs> I, man yours. I, I just want to know who won out the karting today at a youth. Yeah, race. I was thinking that, yeah. Can I just say thanks very much to the Dunlop boys who done their best to take me out before I got to the TT this year. <laughs> <laughs> so you lost then? Uh, we actually all got disqualified in the final and we were told to get out of the cart so we were banned and not to come back again. <laughs> You've been banned from the cart centre? Yeah, they told us we're banned, don't come back. Never. Yeah, ever. Right, wow. okay. We'll have to think of something else for next year then, who, maybe. Who did win, by the way, today? Uh, I think it was Gav Hunt. A bit of a fix on it, really, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly. I don't know how they'd done that, because it was a lap and a half, and it was the demolition derby, and that was it. OK, so it was all serious, obviously. <laughs> Can you ima imagine a bunch of motorcyclists on go-karts? It's just it's a recipe for disaster. I, I saw it on Twitter, actually. And, uh, speaking of which, uh, no questions, but a lot of people wishing you well over the next month or so on the 24th of May when you kick off. Uh, lots of people uh, and saying good luck and also saying happy birthday to you on Friday. Saying you're not 38, not a chance in hell. Uh, I think they're not from here, otherwise that'd be brave. Uh, but happy birthday to you, Michael. Gents, the very best of luck. Looking forward to the races, of course. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, it's Bruce, Keith and Michael. Cheers, boys. Don't go back to the cart then. That's, that's good. See you later. Happy birthday. Uh, okay, next up is a musical industry legend. I don't know what state he's in right now, but we're sure as hell going to find out. Um, he is part of a band that sold more than 25 million albums around the world. He's won more awards than John McGuinness has won trophies. Brit Awards, MTV Music Awards, MTV Video Awards, you name it, he's done it. The band is, of course, the prodigy, and he is Keith Flint. But as you all know, he's a massive fan of motorbikes. And this year, he will have a team at the TT for the very first time. And he's got a great rider in Steve Mercer as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this should be interesting. Please welcome Keith Flint and Steve Mercer. Hi, Hello. Keith. How are you? Nice to see you. Yes. I think, uh, some mugs there for you, boys, that's it. I think Keith might have had a little drink this afternoon. Yeah, I might have a little. Uh, uh, Keith, I've, I've got to just ask, I did hear on the radio today, you didn't want to play with the carts. What was that about? 
Um, I tell you what, with the BSB coming up, I was just needed on the phone and... Um, <laughs> Is that bullshit? <laughs> well, OK. So we went to the Northwest Press thing. We had carts. <laughs> Josh Brooks beat the arse out of me. I couldn't have the same right. again. OK. <laughs> and obviously the fumes and everything else down there were awful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Kit, it must, you're just excited about being here, right? I know how much of you're looking forward I am. to this. I, I'm a fan that sort of built a team around a passion, you know, something that I really, um, are really into. And uh, yeah, of course, it's, it's built on passion, and that's the best, best sort of driving force for any kind of uh, motorsport, I think. Keith, I, I think people know about, obviously, they know about the project in you, all that, but they don't think they know just how quick you are on a bike. You're, quite, you, you're a decent rider in your own right. Have you ever thought about coming in and doing the TT yourself? I always say that I won't do it because I think the riders that do the TT are, 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 are a special breed. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, to line up on the TT course is a big thing. But I was just thinking for yourself to experience it, because I know you're in. I would love to, but it's not like you can come and do a track day here and just big commitment. Sort of, and, and sort of build your, you know. I, I reckon we could arrange it. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't well, if you, if you could, I'd do it, but I wouldn't belittle the people that are out there that are racing. Maybe not tonight. True Rory, warriors. You know, yeah, you know. we can get you an entry in the Manx, I think, to help start him off. Now, Steve, pretty cool boss you've got. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he's just said, he's answered it really. I mean, Keith's like dead passionate about it and he loves the atmosphere and soaks it up. And, you know, it's, it's great for him to be around and it's great for riding with him. It's, you know, it's good fun to be around and we've got a great little team and good bikes, good, you know, good team, good mechanics. And, and, and also, you must have the best tunes on the start line, surely. Of course. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Definitely. Full of it, is it? Definitely. Ready to race. You've got, this is a, for me, it's a big year for you. You've done your apprenticeship. Uh, you've shown what you can do. You're getting in the top 10 now for the first time last year. Uh, and you've got good bikes and you're settled. This is a big chance for you this year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, since I've, for the last sort of four or five years I've been racing, I've only come to the TT with one bike, either a Superstop bike or a Superbike. And I've never, I've never really done all the classes and I've never sort of done a proper preparation beforehand and most of the time I've done my bikes myself and it's just good to go racing and just jump on a bike, not have to worry about putting fuel in it, putting tyres on it and just, and just get on with riding the bike and that's the opportunity Keith's given me and you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. But, but the, the opportunity is not because we're friends, it's because he's a doer. Yeah. You know, I respect Steve, you know, he's one of us. You know, I've, I've followed him through MRO and through his, his career and we've, we've always been mates, but he's a doer. He's a top 10 <laughs> rider. He's a proper, he's the governor. <laughs> and, and, he's the and, governor. And, and, You're and the, I, governor. <laughs> the governor. Are you going to be in the pits? Are you going to be yeah, in there with the Of course I am. Yeah. I've, I've moved, you know, our, our June commitments, as far as the band's concerned, is a massive commitment. But I've moved all the shows. They've been scattered far and wide. <laughs> And I'm going to have two weeks here. You've to had to tell all the other guys that, sorry, TT's on. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And it, it's the first time in 23 years that I've pulled that trump card to say, right. you know, this is us. This is my time off. Well, we said how big the TT was, but we didn't realise it was bigger than Prodigy and the whole world's having to shut down until it's over. They will. They will. You um, know. What's your... What... Um, the TT is a massive thing. And... Um, I do have to say that the team come here humbly, you know, um, I have a profile which is, you know, which is in music, but not in the TT. Can I just say how humble you are with that though, because I watched uh, Keith arrive this morning at the airport and got into a VW Golf with about seven others and didn't moan at all, not at all a diva, you just love no, the crack, no, don't you? No, of course not. But. You know, my, my enthusiasm in motorsport has kept me grounded because, you know, these guys are the true warriors. You know, what I go and do is, um, is um, effortless in, in comparison to a man that lines up at the TT and puts himself in the grid. And also the TT is not like a short circuit where you line up with um, 20 other people. You know, you're, you know, one in line, 
you're put into the, the barrel of the gun, so to speak, and you're fired out. And your man and machinery over 17 miles of course. <laughs> yeah, we do need a track on. day. Yeah. yeah. He, he does. If you do that, you're going to get wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, if it's 17 miles, you could win it. But no, we'll, we'll sort it out, don't <laughs> no. you worry. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, Steve, what's your preparation leading up to the TT? What races are you doing? Uh, we're going to do the Super Sport Evo in the British Championship for, it was mainly just for a bit of track time, but now we've sort of got sucked into it a bit. And James Rispoli, who rides for the team as well, he's doing the main Super Sport. So it's, uh, I'm basically going to sort of, sort of shotgun in, really, and do, do the Evo Championship and go from there. And we're going to do that for the rest of the season, along with the Ulster Grand Prix and, and Macau. Have you ridden your TT Big Bike yet? I've had a little go on it around Cartagena. It, uh, it's, it's quick enough. It's, it's, yeah, it's a quick bike. It's so, yeah. tackle bike, yeah? Yeah, it is, yeah. So, yeah, no, it should be, um, well, it's not, it should be. It will be competitive. It's, it's you know, it's me to, I'm the man who's got to pull the throttle open and get the bike around. The bike can get around quick enough. I've got to make it get around. So, speaking of that, where do you, where do you, what's your sort of aspirations for this year? I say, really, I mean, I want to end up. I know I want to end up, but... I, don't I, think, to... I think that for us, it's a safe race. Yeah. You know what I mean? As long as Steve betters himself and the team that's around Steve can make him get better track time and better lap times, I think that's the most important. Boys, you know, uh, a... we're going to move on really quickly. We've had loads of tweets uh, from probably people <laughs> in here and around the world as well. Uh, I can't read all of them. Uh, there's a couple saying, oh, uh, old Kel's backing you this year. Um, there's... What time do you start drinking? There's a lot of drinking chat on here. But just quickly, Key, just quickly, yes. there is one question on here. And yes and no answer, maybe. Yeah. Uh, would you swap all the music success for a TT win? Um. <laughs> I think that answers it. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve and Key. Cheers, mate. Brilliant. <laughs> you go that way, I'll buy you a pint. I'm actually, uh, I'm heading down this way myself now. I'll go via the bar if you want, Keith. Good man, there he is. Because uh, we're going to swap uh, two wheels for four wheels very quickly. I know it sounds a bit weird, but stick with me. Um, and introduce you to uh, a triple British champion, a champion of British Rally. Uh, please welcome Mark Higgins, everybody. On the water? Yeah, I am training as well, but like these older boys, so... Uh, Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> Might give some sense for this one. Um, great to see you back here. Just remind everyone what you were up to back in 2011. Well, it was a bit of a dream come true, really, to get the chance to drive around the course, closed off just for me, and uh, we did it in that Subaru. Uh, basically a fairly standard car, and uh, yeah, it's the best thing I've done in my career. And um, yeah, we're back again. Don't know why, but we are. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've seen this maybe on YouTube, but I've seen the lap myself, and it looked pretty hair-raising, especially going down Bray Hill, a couple of close moments, shall we say. I think collectively we got 10 million hits on YouTube for that, so it was quite successful from that point of wow. view, but um, it was definitely a moment. I think we had a bit of luck on our side to get that back, and uh, the problem was we had to do another 36 mile after it, thinking about it. Well, according to Keith, there's about 74 miles, but yeah. lucky for you, it's not. Um, you're back again this year. I think you've got the, the track Saturday, Wednesday, Friday or Saturday. You've got three goals at it this year. What are you trying to achieve? Because you're already a record holder. Yeah, well, we've, we've got the new car. The new car comes out next month. Um, it's the brand new WRX SGI. And um, we're going to try and beat what we did before, basically. And we've got to run Saturday on the Monday and on the Wednesday, oh, right, okay. weather yeah. permitting. So, yeah. yeah, it's just great to get out there. I mean, being here in the TT, I'm from the Isle of Man. I love the place and uh, what the riders do is amazing. And to be involved in it is great. It's no point trying to be nice to everyone because basically everyone here I is know. thinking, you're <laughs> cheating, you've got four bloody wheels. Yeah. That's what they're thinking, isn't it? But I know you're a brave, brave man. I know you just come back from your travels as well. I mean, hanging around with Daniel Craig or something, have you? Oh, we've done a few Bond films. And we just, uh, we've done just a few Bond, back. Yeah, just done yeah, a few yeah. Bond yeah. films. Yeah, good. We, no, we just come back from the Avengers in Korea on Sunday. I actually thought Purdy was there, but it's a different film. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really good. 
Cool, cool. And uh, the film's coming out later on. What kind of things do you have to do? Is it speed stuff or is it stunt racing? What is it? Uh, I, I do the stunt driving, but you know, for 25 years now, I've been told and paid not to crash, but now I'm paid to crash, which is great. So hit it hard. Yeah. Hey, all the best. I know everyone here is going to enjoy watching you on this. We said the Saturday, Monday, and the and Wednesday. On the yeah. Wednesday, definitely be worth a watch. That. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Higgins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's time to get back to the two wheels. Three young guns trying to prove themselves maybe this year. Joining James uh, and Steve on stage, please welcome William Dunlop, local boy Dan Neen, and fast talking and even faster rider Dean Harrison. Yeah, it's not a good start. William, I'm going to start with you because Michael's down here. Terrible start. Um, whole new team, a very fast motorcycle. Are you ready for it? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been uh, pretty good so far. So I've done a few miles and the uh, bikes are very good now. Very good. The biggest team you've ever ridden for, I suspect. Have they, um, have they changed anything? Have they asked you to do anything different? Just get out there and ride that bike? Uh, Phelps kind of, you know, he's full on with everything, you know, uh, eating, fit, you know, working hard for it. So I suppose off, off the side of racing bikes, I've been working that way and, you know, I've been, you know, dedicated towards this year. And as I say, even with testing and stuff, it's, it's all different for us as before it's been going straight to Cookstown or whatever. So it's been a different, different attitude to this season. Okay. Have you had plenty of time on it yet? Have you been out on the bike? Yeah, I've done quite a few days in Spain. Now it took us to Cartagena and Almira. It was a bit of a struggle for me just with new bikes. And then we've done a day at Kyrgyz in there, which was a big step forward. And uh, as I say, it's kind of, you know, the fact that I flew Stuart Johnson over just specially to, to work with us for the day was was big benefit and found a lot. So I fly home tomorrow, I think testing again. So it's, it's a big step forward for me anyway. You know what it takes to go around here quick, you're 130 mile an hour plus man. Is the bike what you need? Do you think the bike's going to suit you around here? Well, if anyone can get them going, it's the, the title, lads. Like, they've got a lot of experience. And I think the biggest thing I found with the bike was it's very manageable part. It's very smooth. As the R1 was really aggressive and really fast bike and really good. But this one seems a lot easier and I think it's maybe more suited maybe for, for doing six fast laps rather than just doing one. So. Uh, I'm excited to see what it does. It's definitely got a good chassis, everything about it's good now. Brilliant. Dan? All hot to trot? Yep, good to go. You um, second fastest Manxman around here, going to try and be the fastest? Yeah, well, for the past sort of uh, three years, I haven't really had a good run at it. So, um, you know, this time last year, I had a broken foot and I hadn't rode. You know, I'd done half a day's riding, whereas this year I've, I've been testing and, well, I've probably done. 14 days of riding already, you know, so that's, I, I feel a lot fitter and ready to go. And I've got, you know, some good bikes in Cookstown BU racing. Um, still got to get a bit more time on the 600, but that's yeah, good. You sit, sorry, I was just quick to say, a lot of people think you live on the island here. You're just going to go round and round all day long, but it doesn't happen like that, does it? Uh, you do, but it's sort of, um, it's one of them. You, you know, you're sort of driving to places to say, you know, go to work or whatever, and you, you just switch off. So it's, it's uh, most of the time you just you're not thinking about it, you know until it gets closer to the time. But um, obviously it's handy to know what's coming next. But you know, most, all the boys at the TT know that now. They've done plenty of laps. You've served your apprenticeship now. You're a multiple Manx winner. But do you feel like you've been a little bit unlucky not to have? had better results at the TT because I certainly do you're certainly one of the bravest riders I've ever seen ride to be honest that, and that's not just on the roads that's on short circuits as well yeah I mean obviously I sort of uh, I went pretty well straight away at the TT you know top 10 first TT and um, did 125 on a super stock bike the very first time I did it so uh, I was hoping you know for things to progress a lot quicker but it's just uh, it's just the way it's worked out you know uh, I just feel like I've got a better chance this year. You know, I'm not sort of running around as much prepping my own bikes and 
and, you know, I've got time to think about the job a bit more. So. Do you think that's what's going to be the big difference? Because you're going into a team that knows what they're doing and you're going to have more backup than you've ever had here. Yeah, I think, you know, I've, got, I've been, beforehand, I've, I've been running around all practice week trying to get four bikes ready and, you know, it's really difficult. You know, I've had a lot of boys helping me out, but most of them work practice week, so you, you end up knackered before you've even got on the bike and it's, yeah, makes the job a lot more difficult. So, uh, as it is with, you know, John Burroughs and the lads there, you know, they do all the work. I just give me input and it's, um, yeah, it's working out well so far. And Dean? Great ride last year in the lightweight. One place further up next year? Uh, you never know. <laughs> you never know. You're absolutely right. But looking forward to it? Yeah, not just that class, to be fair. that was. Uh, I'm looking forward to all classes, to be honest. I'm looking forward to getting on my superbike this year more than all else, to be fair. Because we never had a clean run last year, to be honest. Never had a problem, but problem. But So it's just the TT for you, I suppose. So... Uh, We've made a lot of changes this year with ACU and stuff and everything to most we've done's made it better every time I've been on it. So I've been out testing a couple of times and away here and there, so it's good. What's your super sport bike going to be like? You're on a Martrain Yamaha that for me should be... A rocket ship. It should be as good as anything. It, it is a rocket ship. It's absolutely meant to be fair. It's the best 600 that I've... Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's definitely the best 600 I've ever ridden, to be honest. It's definitely the fastest 600 I've ever ridden. There's nothing comes close to that. Obviously, we're running max and suspension, which uh, suits me down to the ground. I, so I've got a bit of a personal relationship with them, which is good. A bit of difference from the bike, the R6 I saw you riding around here a couple of years ago. And I tell you what, you bought it on eBay, and I wouldn't have ridden it down for a paper at the local shops. Well, it's budget for you. It just... I'm not sure whether it was... Uh, none of the wheels were pointing in the, right, the same direction. It was a, a bit of a heat with that, so this one should be... Oh, I, I would have thought you'd be looking forward to the Super Sport race more than anything. Definitely, here. yeah, definitely. Like I say, I did 125 somewhat on mine last year, and I know the package I had last year. And uh, when you get on your new bike this year and you're having problems at a track that's wheeling too much on a 600, you know it's going to be fast. That's a good problem to be having. That's that. a good problem to be having is that far. This is fast as this, so if we can... Uh, and like I say, I've rode against William. William won a, a Milwaukee Armad last year, which is obviously a rocket. I know... I know the difference between the bikes, obviously, as a, as a builder myself, so I can't wait to get my teeth into that and uh, put some times in. And you've just had a good run around at Scarborough last weekend. Yeah, no, it was good, yeah. It's just, I've just it's so different. It's, it, it's, the thing is, that track at Scarborough, to be fair, it's a bit of a, it's a one in its own track. You, you two both know yourself, you've both been round a few times, like, so it's, uh, it's, it's a bit unique in itself, really. You can't, you can't set a bike up there for anywhere else. It's like a one specific only. And like I jumped here. On, yeah, that's it, exactly. But you jump on that thing then, I'm used to chucking it inside where scrubbing a load of speed off and then throwing it around an airpin. Whereas uh, the new R6 didn't want to do that. As soon as it went sideways, the uh, electronics kicked in and says, no, no, you're not doing that, mate. You're going in a straight line. <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been strange, to be honest. But once we adjusted a few, uh, pressed a few buttons on a computer here and there, it's uh, nearly there, to be fair. Dan, did the local knowledge help at the cart track today? Yeah, that was... Uh, Had you been down uh, practising? No, definitely not, to be honest. I think I've been once there before, you know, since it's been built. So uh, I was, it was good fun just to, you know, let your hair down and everyone was going crazy and crashing and knocking each other off the track. It was, you know, you'd expect for these road races that'd be all nice and smooth, flowing around the track, but there was none of that. It was just brain out and, you know, knock as many people off as you could. <laughs> why, why would you expect them to be smooth in cats? I've never... I, I remember years ago once they got some top British championship road racers in cars, they put them in saloon cars, and they just destroyed everything. Some of them went on fire, there was that bad crashes. I, I was in one of them. I know you were in one. Yeah. I think when, when someone tells you, you know, you've got to take it carefully, you do the opposite, and that's what happened. Everyone just, you know, just wrecked the things. So. Any injuries? Did anybody get hurt today? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of people with stiff necks and bad backs, you know, so it's all good fun. Unbelievable. Well, I think three... Uh, Young pretenders going to have a cracking year this year. And uh, I think you should put your hands together, please, for Dean, William, and of course, Dan. And I think Gethin's down there with somebody. I am indeed. Thanks, gents. Sorry about that. That was very... Is that better? I think yeah, it I might can. be. There you go. Um, ladies and gents, obviously, we all know the risks involved with the racing at the TT. Safety is paramount. And before those boys that you've just seen get on their bikes, rev an engine, or turn the throttle, 
uh, the, the roads have to be cleared away, and that's done by the wonderful marshals. Now, is it, we've got some here. Any marshals up there as well? Just check it. There you go. Nice to see you guys. You obviously got the cheap seats. You're doing a shit job. Better luck <laughs> next time. I've got two up there. That, oh, no, that's not two. Um, that's something else. Um, how, I don't know. How did you manage to get the, um, the expensive seats down here, Terry? Uh, in the local knowledge. Local knowledge. Excellent. How long have you been marshalling? Uh, 27 years. Fantastic stuff. What, what do you love about it? I just love the camaraderie and all that and uh, going out there, making the safe track for the boys to go out and play. Do you get to, do you get to watch it all or is it kind of, if, you, if you're doing that you're going to get sacked really? No, no, well, you've got to watch because you've got to watch that uh, everybody's riding properly, there's nothing hanging off their bikes and things like that. The usual thing that's hanging off the bikes is them but... Uh, that's a lovely story coming from Marshall. Yeah, yeah that's excellent. excellent. Uh, Terry, thanks for 27 years, that's it, that's incredible. I know we've got a couple of others here who love it, right? Husband and wife, ladies and gentlemen, look, that's, look at the relationship. Husband and wife, do you not love each other tonight? What's going on? Um, no, I'm avoiding him tonight. You're, why? What's he done? Um, Is nothing. he drinking too much? No, I'm Desi Driver, so he's uh, had a oh. couple. Having a few? Yeah, we'll do it tonight. How long have you been married? <laughs> 15 years. Congratulations. How long have you been marshalling together? Uh, six years now. Do you always get a spot together on the track or are you miles apart? Not if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> true love that, ladies and gentlemen. True love, ladies and gentlemen, is what I was trying to say. I know you, sir, have been doing it a little longer than most. Yeah, um, about 40 odd years. 40 odd years, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And what is it for you that you enjoy so much? It's just what Terry said, just putting something back into it. Um, enjoy getting up. It, it, it's nice to have, not to have the morning practices these days. You can have a lie in. Um, but yeah, it's um, a lot of work, hard work over the fortnight, but it's just enjoyment of it. You're pulling together. There'll be about 1,500 of you, I think, keeping everyone safe this year. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Marshals Association. <laughs> Okay, let's move on now. I'm very excited about these next two names. They are the exciting names, maybe on the entry list this year. Um, a man, the only man to have ever won five TT races in a week. He's back from some horrific injuries and an Australian newcomer. Please welcome Ian Hutchinson and Josh Brooks. Nice to see you. Welcome, boys. Nice to see you. Looking smart, aren't they? Aren't you just, yeah. Beautiful, almost. Just quickly, we've been talking lots about karting. Did you go karting today? I pussed it out because uh, I was at the Northwest thing with uh, Keith and these boys a couple of weeks ago, karting, and the day after we were at Donington, I got arm pumped for the first time ever in my life, so I didn't want to risk it before Brands Act. That's, not from, that's not from the karting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably the right thing to do. Josh, did you go today? Did you down there? Yeah, I went out, um, all, took it all serious, like every sort of racing that I do, and I was like thinking, I uh, got off the start, I was sat about fourth or fifth, and I was strategically picking off my places, and next thing I was on the grass spinning around, and I was like, well... <laughs> you can't believe someone hit you. No, I thought, there some bloody hooligans out there. Yeah, but you will be able to see this, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry, we have filmed the karting, um, I think it's on... Uh, BT Sport and it'll be on YouTube, I'm sure. That's so. good, I'll be able to work out who it was that took me <laughs> out. And it's also on Havoc. <laughs> uh, great to see you guys. Um, great back for you to be back as well. Yeah, you must be excited to be here. Yeah, I am, uh, and I aren't really, because of, uh, obviously, the situation with the team for so long through winter, not knowing what was happening yeah. and stuff. It's kind of taken the shine off it a bit for me, and uh, it's been a long three years, and four years by the time the TT comes round since I raced competitively here, and you know, throughout all that time, all I was uh, thinking about was getting back here and racing here and, and enjoying it. And then uh, when, the, when the time came, it all got pulled from under me. And, you know, all these uh, questions came up about our bike and what we were going to be allowed to race here and stuff. And pretty much up until maybe a month ago, we weren't coming. So I'm still, you know, a, a little bit down about the whole thing. And 
I hope that it can spark a bit of a fire when I come back to racing here. You must be looking forward to getting over here, though, and getting going. I mean, th what, three, four years out, especially when you came back to Macau, having had three years off a bike, and you came back and won straight. I don't know how you did that, but you managed to do that. Yeah, well, before Macau, obviously, none of this had come up for me, and uh, I didn't know anything about it, so we went into Macau, and I was loving being back racing, and I uh, did everything I could before Macau in the short period of time that I had to try and get up to speed, and... Uh, I got one of the team super stock bikes, went out to Spain and did a track day out there and, you know, went out to Macau with the best, you know, intentions of doing whatever I could do out there and came away with a win, which was, you know, amazing. And, you know, it felt more special than anything that I've ever done in racing after what had gone on. So to come away from Macau and then uh, the start, we started to talk with the team again and I thought I'd be lucky to get into the Super Sport Championship at best in the British after the time I've had out and uh, Sean started talking to me about riding in British Superbikes so you know everything just started clicking together and couldn't have been any better for me and then all this came up with the, the TT of us not coming and it kind of crumbled everything and I started focusing my thing into BSB and, and you know try to make that work and and then at last minute it's come back on for the for the TT, so... Yeah, but you are coming, and you're coming back fully fit, 100% fit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not the prettiest looking leg in the world, but I'm sure uh, there's uglier people well, under you, leathers. You're never Brad Pitt in the first place, were you, really? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen his left foot? Have you ever seen his left foot? You're just talking about his face, aren't you? That's the really one. Is it a trick question? <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, the last time I saw it, when he was riding here two years ago, one of them was just wobbling around. It was held together with a carbon tube, but... Ooh. Thankfully, that's all fixed up. Josh, last time I spoke to you, it was on the phone. I was at a Milwaukee function in uh, Amsterdam, it was. Not in a red light area, in the proper area in Amsterdam. Uh, but we were chatting the, to you. The, but you the smoking area. Yeah, no, no, we didn't even smoke anything. Um, but you were having a great time because everyone else was freezing to death in Europe and you were on your jet ski, I think, and your quad bike and everything else. So you were kind of late coming back to the UK, but all hot to trot now. Yeah, that's right. I definitely um, miss home during the during the race season, and um, but I, I, I do sacrifice all those wonderful things in Australia to come in and race amazing events like the the Isle of Man TT. So I'm uh, thrilled to to be back here and racing again. You you must have also had a shock when you heard you possibly weren't coming back. Yeah, I, I remained optimistic through the whole process. Um, I thought uh, initially it was quite a strange situation and I didn't agree with it at all myself, but I just thought, you know, Yamaha is such a big brand um, and Ian is such a big name. Like Hutchison's got a lot of letters in it. And um, yeah. uh, I thought, you know, there's no chance that an event like the, the, the TT is going to, is gonna, and, and a team and a, and a brand like Yamaha aren't going to, somehow find a way to make this work and get around it. So basically I carried on at home in Australia riding my jet ski and my quad bikes and things like that that you do and thought, you know, my job is to race motorbikes, not to worry about all the politics. And, you know, we get to this point here and I, again, also I've got the BSB to focus on as well. So I've got ways of um, distracting myself from these interferences. Also, you, you talk about the, the other things you like doing. I mean, you've got a background in motocross as well, which probably kind of helps around this course a little bit. You're quite used to bouncing around. Yeah, certainly. I, um, I mean, I grew up riding motocross in Australia. You can't go road racing or even short circuit racing, sorry, until you're 16. So up until the age of 16, I was racing motocross. So um, as much as I enjoyed it, I always had the idea of going, of going road racing. And, and uh, the day that I tried it, I was, I was definitely not going to change. And... Um, certainly, I try and use any experience, whether it's cycling, mountain biking, jet skiing, motocross, short circuit, track, uh, road, Isle of Man. I, I try and use everything that I do in life to, to help the next thing. So it, it, it makes sense that it all works out. You did 127 uh, plus last year. Fastest seven, you were coming by quite a, a long way. Uh, what are your aims for this year? I know you looked pretty safe doing that for me. You didn't look too out of shape anyway. Yeah, that was my goal last year was to was to be safe. You know, I didn't want that. I've I've been a, I've I've ridden bikes on the road since the day I was old enough to have a road license. I've I've been a commuter. I use a motorbike. I've since the age I was allowed to. I've had a registered bike and I've ridden on the road. So I've had those moments where you go into a corner and there's a bit of water on the track or gravel and uh, on the road. Sorry, and you've got that real heart in the mouth sort of situation going. I thought I don't ever want to have that happen during the TT. I know what it feels like. It's so uncomfortable. And I, I want to try and generate a situation where that doesn't happen. And, and successfully, I did that. I did the whole TT without having any of those fear moments. And um, 
So to, to, to be the come the fastest newcomer was such a, a, a great um, achievement as well. You know, it was like a, a, a thing that attached to what was already a great um, TT debut for me. And um, I put that down to, to the homework. You know, I come here on, on, on a number of occasions. Um, did, you know, I was only speaking to the, to the newcomers that are, are coming here this year and, and talking about what I'd done to prepare last year. And I'd calculated out to be around 100 laps I'd done of the circuit in a hire car before um, I actually turned a wheel on my race bike. So um, I think a lot How much different It was quite a lot different. Um, the, the best way Yeah. That's visual um, process. The, the bike was running down the hill and I was feeling the sensation, but my eyes weren't up to speed. I was like, it was, almost, it was, it was so crazy to experience. But um, it was only one lap later that it felt like the tracking was back in and then I could progress. It happened so quickly. Even That's the thing that surprised me most, isn't all, all the things that uh, happened during the week, but how quickly I learned. I thought it was going to be a really slow process to learn the track. and. Um, just within, e within every lap that I did, I got such a better understanding of the track and the position I needed to be and where I needed to improve. It was, it was unreal. That, even that surprised me. Got, I was going to say, I've got a couple of Twitter questions. They've been coming in thick and fast, so I think a couple of the guys are in here. Uh, uh, question for you, Ian. Uh, Dave Wards asks, is Hutchie's bike still modified due to previous injury or is it in standard race trim? And he says, good luck, Hutchie. I know that... You've changed around your feet. Obviously, you're changing gear now with your left foot, right, right foot, yeah. right foot. Yeah, yeah sorry for your left foot. Yeah, I'm still on a right hand gear shift. I probably will be. Well, I will be forever now. So, thumb back brake and a right hand gear shift. Okay. And uh, you'll run that in British Superbike? Everywhere, yeah. Uh, a couple of more questions here. Uh, Josh, where do you hope to be finishing in the races this year? Hutchy, do you think you have a win in you this year? That's from Dill. Uh, Josh, you first. Uh, it's really hard to predict. It's like a, a business, you know what I mean? You can only predict what you, you, you forecast, what you think you're going to do in the future after you've got some sort of um, material to gauge that by. You know, one year isn't really a good, a good number of um, statistics to sort of, you know, figure out where I'm going to be. So as long as I improve on, on last year, if I can get another top 10 in Superbike and also I'm riding Supersport this year, so it's another category for me to learn. And um, so if I can, you know get better than a top 10, that's, that's an improvement on last year and I'll be satisfied with that. Had you a win? Yeah. Great answer. <laughs> Easy. <clears throat> I detect a real fire in your belly this year, I think it's going to be fabulous. Uh, actually though, you must be pretty excited next weekend, Brands Hatch. Yeah, I am uh, shitting myself also. <laughs> <laughs> Being out on um, the official BSB test with these lunatics at Snetterton and Brands Hatch and Although I've done the British Championship in Supersport in the past, Superbikes is pretty insane, really. So yeah, you're, not, you're not scared of getting stuck in, here. No, no, I'll get stuck in. I just... Uh, it's whether I come back out when I get stuck <laughs> in. Have you got the shoe sequence sorted now? You would have had a lot of new left shoes, I guess, around for a while. Yeah, tracksuit pants and uh, shoes. I've had to have a bit of a clear out and get some more jeans in. I give it a while, though, because the first time I threw all my tracksuit pants out, I was back in a frame in about six months, so I kept them just in case for a few months this time. But <laughs> James did his best to try and re-achieve what I did at the XL bike show last time by riding into me. When Explain you yourself. Me? That was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was my fault. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I actually, I'm, I must just say, Josh, I can't believe that you did a TT last year and didn't have one of them heart in your mouth moments. I had one every lap. Yeah. I mean, that's extraordinary. It was, yeah, last very year impressive. it was extraordinary indeed. Um, actually, great to see you back. Josh, all the best uh, over the next couple of months as well. Uh, I'm sorry we can't chat a bit longer. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ian and Josh. Thank you. Great stuff, that. Uh, okay, moving straight on. Next up on stage, we've got the fastest Manx man in the history of the TT, Connor Cummins. 
a winner last year, James Hillier, who's keen to show uh, it's the start of things to come for him. And finally, Gary Johnson, uh, who's fuming about the carting, by the way, but he's fit, rearing to go, and uh, with a full arsenal of machinery to go to the TT. Please welcome Connor, James, and Gary. Pal. We'll probably start off as we always do and talk about the karting because I know you're fuming, aren't you, Gary? Yeah, kind of. Uh, you know, the karting was a bit of fun and uh, I was robbed of a first place, I think. Uh, <laughs> you know, I deserved it. I cut the course and I did everything I could to win the thing and uh, <laughs> nobody gave me the winning trophy. So, Someone uh, did say that you made up your own course today. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how many corners there were, but on my track there was two, one at the top and <laughs> one at the bottom, it was just a big circle. And was there a protest? I don't know if it was that, just a bit of local people, wanted the local lad to win. No offence, Cap. All right, that wasn't you, Connor, was it? No, no, I was a shite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming it on the aerodynamics, I think. Hey, uh, Connor, tell me, from your point of view, is there extra pressure? Do you feel the eyes on you during... The race weeks because you're from here and you're getting so much support from from the local crowd uh, possibly uh, they haven't been on me for the last couple of years so I've been a you know in a bit of the in the background a wee bit but you know um, hopefully I'll uh, put it all right this year and uh, get some good results but you know just I don't see any pressure as such it's just a case of the way I see it I've been given a chance on a really really good bike and down to me to make the most of it. How's the fitness? I believe you did uh, about a 9,500 mile an hour bicycle run over the weekend and got around it all right? Yeah, 95 miles on my backside. It was, um, it's taken its toll, shall we say. But you know, it was, it's all on a good... He, he's got some cream, don't worry. Give it a show later. Hey, um, it wasn't you that um, puked up an energy drink and then drank it again, was it? Was that you? No, that was Keith. Don't blame oh, me was, on oh, that Oh, get it. I mentioned... Men Oh, it's Sorry, Keith. Keith always does that. That's how he likes it. Does it? Is it? Regurgitating. Uh, Connor, though, really uh, the best package now, really? Yeah, definitely. Um, best of me career so far. Yeah, just down to me to, to make the most of it, as I said. And um, I've had a difficult past few years, but I hate making excuses. I'm not going to do it now, and um, I'm just going to give it a good, a good was go. That, was that a pretty exciting phone call when you found out? Yeah, I thought uh, April Fools would come a bit early, but I'm glad it's come. And, um, you know, I, I held, held station for a, a little bit, and I'm really glad it came, and uh, it's, uh, it's a dream come true. Have you ridden the bike yet? Because uh, the, the big bike, do you fit on it fairly well? Because one thing for you is you need to be, uh, be comfortable on a bike the size of you. I fit better on that than I did the cart today. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've not sat on the Superbike, but I've, I've sat on the, uh, the new Honda Fireblade SP uh, 1000 because uh, I'm riding for three different teams this year. So I've ridden the RAF Reserves uh, 1000 Superstock bike at the BSB test, and it's a, it's a brilliant bike, I've got to say. Um, it fits perfect, loads of room, which is handy for me, being really small. Um, you know, and it's got a load of power, and it just handles so good. James, uh, your first win last year, uh, terrific ride, obviously the lightweight, but uh, you also had some terrific races in the big bike class. You've lost your number one. Yeah, uh, for sure. It was a good year for me last year where I was in my career. It was a big step up and uh, more than anything now, I've sort of proved to myself what I can do and hopefully this year we can carry that on from practice week and um, hit the ground running with the same team, same bikes. Are you looking forward to setting off number... Do you think number two is going to be better for you? Because I think it is going to be. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I've got a carrot now and quite a big carrot. But um, it's there. And, um, <laughs> That's very rude. <laughs> a red we'll carrot. Go. But, uh, yes, it's, um, you know, everyone's sort of sticking to their guns a bit with their start numbers. And at the end of the day, you are racing yourself. So everyone's going to be going as quick as they can. And I, for sure, will be doing the same. And... Um, full intention is to, to, to you know, win, but um, at the Isle of Man, obviously anything can happen, we just take it. If you, if you can do the kind of speeds and times that you were doing behind John, and if you can do that from the off, 
you're going to be in the mix somewhere for a, for a win. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the plan, and um, we'll find out on the first race. But um, I've proved to myself, you know, obviously we can do that those times now, and um, the bike's good enough. We lock the settings down, and, you know, so that bike is going to be as I finished the race last year. So, you know, for a, there's no excuses, really. I just need to... Um, get knuckle, knuckled down and concentrate on the job. Give us a smile. That's better. Beautiful. That's a winning smile. Hey, Gary, um, something you weren't quite able to do last year, winning in three races just wasn't meant to be. What are your memories from last year? Uh, you know, I had some good memories from last year, but, uh, you know, a lot of bad ones. You know, when you sat on the sideline watching these boys go past doing, you know, real good speeds and you're not there to follow them and, or add to them tallies, then, uh, you know, I'm, I was disappointed. But... Uh, that's all behind us, you know, it's built from foundation blocks for this year, you know, it's the first year I've gone into a continuation of the same bikes and that's been the biggest thing for us, you know, uh, you know, I'm running my own team in the Superbike and Superstock with my local sponsors and, you know, they're doing real good behind us, we've got a good package, you know, it's well proven and, uh, you know, if I can finish off where I was and just improve on it, which we have done a little bit, I think we're in for good results. But some exciting news about the Triumph, I think we're all excited about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, to be on a British manufacturer, you know, when Smiths of Gloucester, you know, first got in touch with us, you know, what do you look at? You know, they've come with a package and it's a factory bike and, you know, it's a proven, you know, championship winning British super sport machine. And then, you know, that, that was the deal clincher. And then, then they said Michael Rutter was going to be my teammate. I thought, first thing you've got to do is beat your teammate. I went, box ticked. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 Absolutely perfect. Uh, Connor, back to you. Um, we had terrific conditions last year uh, as far as weather was concerned. Have you had a good look around the circuit? Much changes? Uh, there's a few changes here and there around the circuit, like Hillbury and the surface changes, really. Nothing drastic, but um, yeah, it, was, it looks a, a lot better today than it did in the winter, that's for sure. Wow, it's about this time we had snow, I think, last year. Yeah, I was making snow, snowmen in my garden, I think. You child. That's great well, fun, isn't it? You've got hey. to do it, haven't you? It got loads of tweets in here for you. It says, um, Paul Thomas says, this is Connor's year on the big Honda. Smash it, Conrod. Thanks very much. Don't smash your Conrod. He meant smash it, Conrod. It's good advice. And well over, that's for sure. Um, we've kind of answered that one about uh, getting up to speed again, 100% fit. Uh, that's it, one for your mum there. Does, <laughs> that's not for my mum. It says, does the sofa come from the 80s sitcom, The Jeffersons? Weird. Thanks for that. Who's that? Is Luca here? He's Go watching, on. The, watching the wrong show, um, I think. And uh, uh, oh, uh, does Connor think getting rid of his beard will make him go faster? <laughs> That's shit. Have I got something on the end of my chin? Mm. We, we we had a conversation. It's still actually. there, isn't it? I, yeah. yeah. I think so. Last time. I... Just what? about. Yeah. yeah. We actually had a conversation earlier today about why so many young guys are all now growing beards, and we asked that we did a little survey, and two of them said because we're lazy, we can't be bothered to shave. <laughs> Is that the case? I ran out of razors. Straight away, there's some tweets actually saying, is that a beard? It's from Scotty, you might know him. That now is no, the sorry. Scotty <laughs> rides motorbikes, you know, yeah, exactly. Um, expectations for TT this year. Um, James, how do you think you can go? Can you think all the way, win it? Uh, you know, that's always the intention. We just um, take it as it comes, and I will be 100% riding as fast as I can and see where that puts us on the day. That's all you can do around here is... Um, do your best and keep it sort of steady. You know that you, you, you can't override here. It just bites you in the arse and you go backwards. So we'll see. Gents? Yeah, I was just quickly going to say your lightweight bike, the bike you won with last year, many changes to that? Yeah, um, a number of small changes, I think, which should have a larger impact together with them. And uh, the boys back in Bournemouth are working really hard with that on a few aspects. Just sort of... Um, Simple things, really, just to make it a bit more of a race bike from where they come from as, as a standard commuter. You know, they're, they're such a different motorcycle to where they come from the factory. I want to ask Gary if leading races last year, big bike races, are going to give him confidence this year. So it looked like, even though he finished, it looked like that actually getting out there and going fast from the off and, and leading races give you uh, just, you had a right smile on your face from doing that. Yeah, definitely. You know, coming back, like I said, on the same bikes, just being able to carry on where we left off and hopefully finish off on the podium or, or better like but uh, the best thing that we're doing this year you know I've got a new venture again with a lightweight same as James but uh, I'm coming on a CF Moto which uh, 
some people don't know, it's, uh, it's a Chinese manufacturer. It's the first new manufacturer in 50 years to the Isle of Man. And, you know, it came last year, dipped its toe. But this year it's coming back. You know, I'm working with the UK importers, WK Bikes. And, you know, we've worked really hard on that bike. And, you know, there was a bit of Mickey taking in the pub, you know, last year. What was that bamboo bike you was riding last year? Is it got Chinese chopstick spokes and that in it? Well, I can assure you now, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's not that bike now. And, uh, you know, with the development we've done, I think we could surprise a few people on that bike. Well, we'll look out for the chopsticks. Uh, James, thanks so much indeed. Put your hands together for Connor, James and Gary. Thanks, lads. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. It's a lovely beard. Don't let anyone tell you different. It's beautiful. Just can't. Anyway, uh, great to see the guys. We're moving straight on. It's time for a bit of sidecar action now, and we've got the big guns. Uh, we've had a man who's won 16 TTs, a four times world champion, and the brothers who stormed to their maiden victory last year. This, boys, you ready? It's going to be a little bit of a squeeze, just to warn you. We're all going to have to get quite friendly. Please welcome Dave Molyneux, Patrick Farrantz, Tim Reeves, Ben, and Tom Birchall. gone on one sofa. We, we, we were chatting earlier how that, how that might go, where you might sit, but you all look very comfortable there. Gents. So you don't actually hate each other? <laughs> <laughs> Gents, wonderful to see you all uh, here. I suppose the first thing we should talk about, rule changes, extra speed. You're going to be fast this year, right? My turn first, eh? <laughs> going to be fast. Well, let's all hope so, yeah. It, I think it puts the... Uh, different engines that we use, Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, all on a level playing field. That's what I'm looking forward to anyway, most. Uh, I was going to say, if we need some more room, actually, one of you could just sit in the, in the sidecar there. It's, um, we're having a look at it earlier. It's a ph phenomenal machine, isn't it? It's so light, so quick. Tried it out, have you? I'd love to try it out. Can I Fancy try it out? Go. I'd love <laughs> You've had it, the funniest he's, thing I've ever he's seen. He's been sat in it making noises all afternoon. Bloody that good. idiot told me he really wants to have a go. Are you needing <laughs> a, a passenger, Tim? Yeah, it's looking like, isn't it? For yeah, some I, reason, he's, few he's not turned yeah. up. I'll have a look at it. What's the money like? Well, I've got a few offers already. Mr. <laughs> Flynn, I was talking to Mr. Flynn at the bar, and he seems quite keen to get on it. What, 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 skills, what skills do you need? As long as you can leave your brain in your toolbox, you'll be all right. Oh, yeah, I'll piss that. What brain? What brain? I was going to say, <laughs> have you even got one? But seriously, though, the rules have changed. It should be more of a level playing field this year for you all, shouldn't it? Yeah, I, I, I firmly think so, you know, obviously when a thing's in standard trim, some engines are a little bit slower than others, um, when they're tuned they raise the game and, and there is a limit to how, how 600 can go, so I think we're pretty much all going to be on that and uh, yeah, I, I just think it's going to be a great year, great year for sidecars, we've got these two guys here, or four guys, wherever the fourth one is, that's got their you know, maiden wins, and uh, it's, it's brilliant that, you know, it's great for our sport, and uh, old-timer like me can't keep on winning. Oh, you look I'll try, though. <laughs> <laughs> sure you but, will. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're all looking forward to a great race. Ben and Tom, uh, I'm sure Tim would disagree with me, but uh, you, you possibly look like winning two last year if you hadn't have been a bit too enthusiastic coming down from Keppelgate there. You clobbered the... Uh, like a big stone in a bank in, nearly flung That's him out. Uh, well, something just jumped out from nowhere. And that they way. do, they move all the time. It's the fairies. Yeah, they weren't my fault. Maybe they weren't in the right place or something. I'm not sure. I'm not bothered what you were thinking. You, uh, it was your fault. I want to know what you were thinking. Is it a family show, this? <laughs> yeah, 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 it is actually. actually yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, yeah, big shame, right? But, yeah, we, we had a good lead and all that, but we were only at first lap, so there was plenty to go. But, yeah, it was just amazing to be in that sort of position, you know. Did, did you know it was tight in? Did you have a clue it was going to happen? Yeah. So yeah. you could kind of it's try and one of them maneuver yourself? Horrible slow motion moments. You know, it's like you think, that's it, we're out, yeah, forget it. But then he, he, just, he just turned around and kept the thing wide open, going down to, 
So Craig there, and I just had to give him a whack, and he sort of shook his head and said, no, I'm still going. <laughs> no, we've got to stop. I'm, I mean it this time. You've got a wheel like a pretzel. Yeah, You've got the job's stop. over. I actually thought that it was, I clouted him. You know, I thought, oh, I've brushed him on the bank. And that would have been all right then, would it? Well, immediately I thought, it's all right. It's, we've got all way down to Craig. He'll be winded. He'll get his breath back. If he hadn't, there's all way down to Brandish for next thing. You know, he'll, he'll be all right. He's going to be all right, Tom. It's okay. <laughs> Well, obviously, no, it weren't, was it? So. Well, um, one of the things, obviously, you do need is trust in the machine, whatever you're riding, but also in each other. I imagine you do have a slight advantage being brothers. That must be key. Yeah, I don't care about him at all. <laughs> I hate him, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, in, you know, really, I think, I think it is. Tim's rode with his brother and to great success, and there, there is something going on. We're only talking today, me and Dave as well, you need a real special relationship with passenger. It helps you a lot, and it, it's that's how it is. You know, he needs to know what you're thinking before you're thinking. You need one that turns up. <laughs> <laughs> he's here. He's here, Dave. 25 years you've been doing the TT now. Well, I mean, you've been around for longer, I know, but you've 25 starts, 42 what? races. That's pretty impressive. Actually, I'm going to stretch it. That's it, right. It's near, near. Oh, I think about 27 years actually riding. <laughs> 25 years since I won my first race, which is uh, 1989, and yeah, and keep on loving it. Another stat on top of that, actually, 32 finishes. Round of applause, 16 wins. Yeah, 16 wins, 32 finishes, and only off the podium four times. Patrick, you got, you know, you got to deliver now, haven't you? Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, this is mine and Dave's fifth year of riding together, and. Uh, we seem to be pretty sync everywhere we go. We seem to be putting in good lap times every time we're out. And um, yeah, it should be, a, should be a good year this year. We've been out testing already quite a number of times and everything seems to be going well with the bike. Dave's riding fantastic. I seem to be still feel as on the top of my game. And yeah, we're, we're dead happy at the minute. Tim, you've had a lot of success on short circuits. How, did, how would a short circuit win compare with your first TT win? There is no comparison, really. It's, That's um, what I thought you'd say, actually. Yeah, you know, anyone who's won a, won a TT, I'll tell you the same. I'm sure it's, uh, you know, all, all those years I raced on short circuits and world championships, and I, I thought this lot were monkers coming here. And to be honest, I wish I'd come a lot earlier in my career and had the chance to do it a lot more, you know, earlier on, because the feeling you get from winning, you, you just really can't compare it to anything. It's, Why? Yeah. Because of the, the, the nature of the circuit, you put more into it or it takes more doing sort of logistically or what's uh, the... Everything, everything involved with the Isle of Man TT is a lot harder. It's just finding the money, the backers, finding the right bike that suits you, finding a passenger that can do it. And then you have to concentrate that hard for an hour, don't you? You've got to be physically right and mentally right. And it just takes everything out of you, your body, your bike and the whole job. And to finally get a win, it melt. Literally, like I said on the day, other than the, the day that my little girl was born, it, it was the best day of my life. And... I still say that now, and that's why I'm back here again. And hopefully, I know that with these two drivers here and these other these two passengers, it's going to be the hardest job again, I'm sure. And I think you're probably going to find the best sidecar racing that they've seen on the island now, because you know we said just behind the back, there's how many TT wins? 21. There's 21 TT wins sat here. There's seven World Championships, uh, six or seven British Championships, and I think yeah, the depth of field now is going to be really strong. And, Who's going to win? <laughs> I, honestly, I think it might, uh, it might be one of us three. Uh, we like I, that. I, I, there's one thing I must say, though. I do believe in the karting today that Gary Johnson was working for Ben and James Elliott was working for Dave because <laughs> my back is Cost us killing a me. You. They smashed the shit but out of Is there going to be a higher rate of attrition, higher power, a bit more power this year? Do you think it would be tougher on the motors? Uh, no, I think it would be far better because... The, with open rules, as long as it's 600 cc, you know the, the, the tuning parts are stronger. So, I think the engines will be more reliable. And everyone's moaning that we're going to be going dangerously fast. That's not going to happen. It, it, yeah, it'll be faster, but it won't be rakes fast. It'll just what we're talking better. about. Another 20 brake or about 140 brake horse now, maybe. Yeah, no, it won't be 20 horsepower. It might be 10 horsepower more, but enough to make them probably more reliable and and probably a little bit easier to ride because they'll have a bit more grunt bottom end. And I think it'll be good racing. I think. So you think the lap record will go? We're going to have a go. Yeah, what, what? Please say that on a mic so everyone can hear what you just said. Check in my mic, will you? Never mind that. I said, it's time you two got on an outfit. Because yeah, you tested my bike a couple of years ago. What do you think? Were we went, good? Went, went round Derby at lap record, breaking speeds. 
It's time you got Dave, out have there. You, have you seen him in the chair? He was a quivering wreck. I've seen Sh him myself. Surely, Steve, your eyesight wouldn't cope with it now, would it? I, yeah, no, I want to have another go. In fact, I was going to ride yours at Saxon Ring, but he didn't turn up. I had to borrow someone else's. You can have a go this year, Phil. I, I am going this time. Oh, okay. We were going to have a go, but it turns out Steve's too old to actually enter the teaching. Yeah, I can't get a licence now. I can't no, get a licence now. Well, how, do you, how do you keep your pilot's licence or your eyesight? You, is it all right, is it? How what? <laughs> all right, OK, you're hearing it. It's, it's hearing's going as well, didn't guys. Get yeah. Didn't get that. It's, it's, it's all going. It's yeah, all right. It's all right. right. Day release is almost <laughs> over. We'll take you back later. Uh, quick... Uh, Dave, to finish, what's the preparation like uh, in the lead-up to, to T, TT from sidecar point of view? What races will you be doing in the lead-up to the races? Right, yeah, well, we've done a, a few test days and uh, locally, just recently at Jerby Airfield, we've had a, a two-day event this weekend. We had a, a great time up there, you know, just thrash around all, all weekend like you do, lap after lap, and just uh, trying to get everything as good as it can possibly be, so... Yeah, we do, we've got a few more events on the, on the lead up to that. And uh, I know that Tim and Ben and Tom there, they do World Championship, and so they're off abroad doing their thing, and we just stick local. But plenty going on. We're riding as much as we can just to get the thing sorted. So. Uh, ben, Tom, good shape? Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, bike were great last year, and the whole team and everything around us. And so it's, it's just moving on. and. We sat listening to everyone tonight talking and, and that's the thing with the TT, it moves on every year and it, we're in a good position, we've got the same stuff, same tackle, same engine, same engine builder, same chassis and it just builds and builds and grows like your knowledge of the course does, you know, we did a lap this morning and it just it's clicking in a little bit better than it did last year already and it's, that's the whole th nature of the beast here, you just love it because you, you never stop learning it, you know, Dave probably knows all of it but you never stop learning. <laughs> yeah, he, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he learned a bit this morning, but you're not going to tell him. So it's in. That's fair enough. Uh, Wait, guys, I, I've got one of them now. I know. One of them there, uh, Dave did, Bonnany. Well, did he do a deal? Good deal, was it? <laughs> well, it's one, oh, it was a difficult one. I didn't, I, I, if I'd known that he'd have built me a new one, I would have gone to him, to be fair. But you, when you're close, I was like, yeah, I felt a bit awkward about asking him if he'd build me one. So I, I got a second hand one of his, one of his old ones and... Yeah, she'll be a weapon, I reckon. I'm really quite looking forward to riding it. It'll be re about a week's time, she'll be ready to go and testing will start, and then it gives us four or five weeks to... I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite excited about having it. And he says the depreciation's pretty good as well. All oh, right. Residual. Um, yeah, residual value's good. Guys, there's uh, loads of tweets on here. There's no questions, literally just saying, it's great to see you up here. Um, there's not much room on the sofa. Don't, well, you don't have to lie and bump, bump it up for us. We know there's probably no one tweeting. I didn't want to read right. what they're we, saying we, about we you. We understand. <laughs> no, it's right. all great, and they're just wishing you the very best of luck over the next couple of weeks, as we shall do now. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Please give it up for Dave, Patrick, Tim, Ben, and Tom. Right for, on your own there for a second, I'm just leaving uh, as well. We'll be all right, don't you worry about us up here. Thank you very much, I'll just join the boys, thanks Patrick. How's your wife, all right, is she good? She's good. So send her my love, won't you? We go, we go back. Has she gone red again? Is she gone, where is she? Where is she? Is she, is she far? There she, look how red she is, who's that talking to her? Oi, stop talking to my, uh, his wife. <laughs> Oi, mate, bog off. What are you doing? She's with me. Oh, you're quite big, sorry. No. <laughs> Nice to meet you, sir. That was embarrassing. Yeah, you stay there, boys. Don't worry about me, yeah? Yeah, call yep. yourself friends. Um, ladies and gents, time for a quick word with our sponsor, uh, one of the main sponsors of the TT, uh, Poker Stars. I'm, I'm sorry to make you get up there. You're right. You obviously, I'm, I'm good. that's not a biking injury, is it? It's not, but good. Uh, it'll it's be a, an accident on a step. Accident on the step? Yeah. You've got the nerve to turn up here <laughs> after an accident on the step, and these boys are putting their life at risk. How do you feel about that? I feel like an absolute idiot. I'm sorry for making you feel like that. Um, just to introduce uh, you to everyone, this is Michael Joseph, Head of PR at Poker Stars. Without you, this wouldn't be going on. Uh, and I know one of the things you support and have done for the last few years now is the Spirit of TT Awards. Can you explain a bit about the awards? Sure. So we've created the Spirit of TT Awards because one of the things that Pokestars wanted to do was to recognise one of the unsung heroes who makes this festival, this, this event uh, possible. And so whether it's the, the, the marshals or all the other people in the back seat, uh, or the back behind the scenes who make this possible, we want to recognise them. And so we want to identify someone 
who really uh, epitomises the ethos and the values of the TT, whether it be compassion, respect, courage, um, and uh, generosity um, and contribution to our community on the, here on the Isle of Man. Super. How long have you been doing this award? So we created this back in 2010, so yeah. we've had it for a few years now. Um, last year's winner was a man by the name of Eric Anderson, 80-year-old uh, uh, marshal who's been uh, involved in the event since 1952. Um, really important part of our, um, this event, makes it all possible. Um, and so this year, we're going to take a slightly different tact with uh, the uh, selection process. We want to invite anyone uh, at home or in the community to, uh, to nominate a, a recipient. Um, we're going to have, um, it'll, you'll be able to nominate people through the website or through the Facebook group, um, and it'll be totally open to the Isle of Man community um, and the racing community to nominate someone who really epitomises those values of respect, courage and compassion and, and so on. Sounds good to me. When, when do you announce the win? Is it during the, the couple of weeks of the, the yeah, So we, we'll, nominations are now open, and so nominations will, will close uh, in uh, mid-May, uh, and on the 15th of May we're going to announce the finalists. Uh, there will then be a judging panel of uh, people from the Isle of Man government, from the race uh, organisers and, and Pokes as well, um, and uh, they'll then present a trophy to the winner uh, in conjunction with the Pokestar Senior TT race on the, on the grandstand day. There you go, get nominating. Uh, Mark, I wish you well with your injury. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Uh, Mark, ladies and gentlemen, from Pokestars. Thank you. Yep, it wouldn't be happening without them. A big thank you to Mark and the team. Uh, now, guys, um, next up, we're going to get three riders on who are racing in the TT for the very first time. What do you remember of your first race here? Well, what I did remember that I didn't have uh, all the rider liaison officers like Milky Quail and Johnny Barton and people like that that showed you around the circuit. I came over here on the ferry, I think, I don't know, after the Northwest 200 in my transit van. <laughs> and I think I got in about three or four laps because petrol was so expensive, or it seemed that way. Plus my old transit didn't like going up the mountain. And that was about it. And that was how I came over here and learnt the circuit. So realistically, I learnt it actually on the race bike, which is so unusual nowadays wow. we only heard from josh brooks there how he'd done a hundred laps in a high yeah. car and, and things like that so there's so many facilities now for newcomers to come over here and learn this track and it's just a wonderful exercise they put on was he I, I came over I, I didn't do many laps at all i had to work so i couldn't get the time off came over 18 and the first real time i saw the place was heading down on my race bike but it was a small capacity 252 stroke so and i i remember being a little bit out of my depth but i remember loving it as well the only thing I would say back then, and it probably wasn't correct, if you did go round, you could probably go around quite fast, whereas nowadays, on the, when the roads are open, you get a speeding ticket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's always a problem, isn't it? Well, let's see if it is squeaky bum time or if they're looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a warm welcome, racing the TT for the very first time. It's uh, Martin Jessup, Peter Hickman, and from the Motor3 World Championship, Danny Webb. <laughs> Well, it's good to see you. So, how do you prepare for just over 37 miles for the very first time? Good question. <laughs> I was hoping to ask you like that. Don't ask us. Uh, well, he had, a, a he had a transit van, so he's no yeah, help. There's a lot of people out there you should be asking. But how many laps have you done so far? Uh, I've done quite a few actually. I've done I've done definitely over forty in a in a high car now. So um, and probably about three hundred and fifty are watching the DVDs right. um, for the good past probably like three four months now. So um, that, that that's kind of something new as well. I mean something you've yeah we were discussing that earlier. We yeah. didn't you know there was no DVDs around on stuff like that. So does that help as much as the car? Do you think or I, f I find it um, definitely helps a bit. Yeah, uh, it was definitely more, it's funny. I was talking to Josh Brooks earlier that. Um, earlier today and he was saying that it didn't really make sense watching the DVDs until he'd actually done his first lap on a bike um, and after watching a few of the DVDs before even coming in a car it was really hard to learn and then after I came in a car and, and kind of saw what I was you know what I was up against watching the DVDs definitely made more sense so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to after my first lap being able to watch the DVD again and see how much more sense it makes. Do you, do you feel like you know what bit of the tracks coming next, what corners are coming next? Yeah, I'm actually quite comfortable with it at the minute. Um, probably a, a bit more comfortable than what I thought I was going to be. Um, 
it's just you know such an amazing place, isn't it? But uh, things there's there's obviously certain sections which come nice and easy and naturally, and then there's other sections which are a bit harder. Ma Martin, how about you? Yeah, I mean, mine. You for you, you've done uh, Northwest. You've done uh, right at the front of McCambi really quick. They had a lap record, I think, at one point. Uh, this is more or less natural progression. I would have thought for you. Yeah, you know, it's uh, been uh, racing on the roads now. I think for about eight years, and. Um, so I think the sort of initial shock of going past trees and lampposts and that won't be, it's, you know, just for me, it's just learning, learning the course, um, which I haven't done that many laps. I was speaking with Josh last night, you know, obviously done an amazing job last year as a newcomer, and he said he'd done over 100 car laps. I was like, oh, I've done seven. I've actually done my eighth today uh, with James Hillier. So, uh, you yeah, know, I've got some work to do. Um, I wanted to do a lot more. I was trying to get over, but with my commitments in the British Championship, we've not really had a chance. But I've got two more trips planned before we come in, race here for the TT. You definitely, you definitely look like you're the type who's going to enjoy it. Uh, I mean, well, to be fair, all you do, but uh, certainly you, Martin, look like you, you're kind of looking, really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, I want to get out there and get stuck in. You know, it's just a case of having, you know, a safe year and again, really the next year and then, you know, sort of three year plan. I want to be. I want to be getting some good results within three years, really. So just uh, following on from that, actually, Martin, I think you sent a tweet earlier, which I saw, when you saw the, the video at the start of the show from last year. That yeah, really yeah. struck a chord Yeah, with that's you. it. It's sort of coming over and doing laps and then just sitting there watching it on the big screen. It's sort of, that's bang, you know, it's hit at home. It's not far away. And, so um, the reality. Yeah, just sort of smiling, just, you know, excitement. And what about the, the excitement? Because we all know it's such a unique race. To, to be part of that, you know, do you ever stop and think, this is it, I'm actually going to do it now? Yeah, it was. You know, I was, I've only ever been over here twice um, to watch. And right. last year, I knew it would be my last year um, of watching, coming over and having a few beers and enjoying it. You know, I secretly knew I was going to be back here. You know, so, it's, um, yeah, since then, it's been a lot of hard work. Danny. Now, I know you've done some road racing, but it was in a car park at the Thunder Sprint, I think, up in <laughs> Cheshire somewhere. That's, a, that's about the way, as far as it's gone. But you're not going to look forward to an orange jacket, I know, but you're looking forward to the, the racing. I can't wait. You know, I mean, the first time I come here, it was just for, um, it was for a charity event with, with Tim Reeves. And um, when he first said that he was going to come and do the TT, I, I thought he was a bit crazy. But when I come here, it wasn't even race week, practice week, nothing like that. And he took me around in the car, and it was a bit like... I was like, fuck, now I, know, now I know why you're doing it, you know? It was right. just, it was Excuse one us? of them things where when you drive around in the car, it's, it's amazing doing 40 mile an hour, let alone 160, 70 mile an hour. So when did it first enter your head, though? It's always been in my head since then. I've always kind of wanted to do it, but I thought after my career's finished in, on the circuit racing, then I'll, then I'll try and do it. And last year, things got a bit messy with a Moto3 team in GP, and... Things just got a bit political and stuff like that, and I just, all I want to do is go and ride a motorbike and have fun. And um, and I thought, well, I've always wanted to do the TT. And over Christmas, I was kind of, I was talking to my dad about it. My dad was like, hey, sure, it's a good idea, and got to it. And I thought, well, why not? Seem, don't seem like a seems like a good time to do it. So um, yeah, why don't I find a few things out about it? And it's all come come good. You, you, you're not known as a, a big capacity bike rider. You, the smaller capacity is really. You've been awesome on them. Uh, what experience have you got on? Because you don't have to ride every class. Yeah, I rode, uh, I rode a 600 at the end of last year and I've been testing on, on my um, stock 1000 I'm riding in BSB. Um, and we've got on, I've gelled with a 1000 quite well actually, better than what I thought. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been going, going good in testing and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm only riding a stock bike, that's all I'm riding. I'm not riding a super bike yeah, or anything like that, but yeah, I'm doing, doing the classes class, yeah. just, to get, just to get track time basically. Um, but I'm, I'm not expecting results or anything like that. I'm just going to go and ride and just have fun and, and do laps and get as many laps as I can. Well, you certainly won with the slippers or the shoes tonight. They're pretty it's special, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been dazzled by these diamonds. <laughs> down beautiful here. bling, that is. You, be, do I need a pair? Yeah. yeah, I think you really would. So that, we, we love your shoes out there. But the kind of... I know we're all excited about it. And obviously, there's not many days left before it gets there, but... It's going to be a nerve-wracking time for all you guys. We, we know that, and you know that. I'm shitting myself ready to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are. Well, but it is. I mean, it, whether, you, whether you're John McGuinness or Michael Dunlop or anyone down there, it's a nerve-wracking time. But your first time, there's excitement, trepidation, everything else, and that's something to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something I'm definitely looking forward to, you know. I've actually never been really a, a nervous kind of person. 
even when I did my first ever British Superbike race, I, I kind of sat on the grid and you know wasn't really nervous at all. I was I was excited for it. Um, but yeah, so I think maybe this might be a little bit different lining up on uh, Glen Crutchery Road, but um, we'll have to find out. Do you think he's going to suit your type of rider? You're a pretty safe rider, you're kind of big lad for, for, for getting the big bikes around? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've been a, a very smooth rider right from when I started my career. And um, somewhere, you know, uh, like Thruxton, where you have to be really kind of smooth and off the throttle a bit earlier and drive through the turns. Um, a lot of the places and a lot of the corners around the Isle of Man circuit are, are very similar, so fingers crossed for myself it will, um, it will come good. And your dad won the bank, so he's given you plenty of tips, I'm sure. He'll be loving that you've mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> Is he here? Is he here tonight? He's not, he's not here tonight, no. He should, be, he should actually be watching, so hello if he's watching out on the, on the internet he, somewhere. He'll obviously be over here for the race, though. Yes, he's, uh, him and my mum will be coming over, yeah, so uh, it'll be really good. 77 Newcomers, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. Yeah, it was a Manx, uh, a Manx, a Maxton Yamaha 250. So, um, but he did, he did about three years, I think. He did a 500 Crichton Honda and also uh, a Jawa of all things. The difference was back then, and I did it at the same sort of time, is that you didn't do that many laps because you kept seizing up everywhere. And the one thing that you guys have got now is that generally you will get a lot of laps in during practice because the bikes will keep going round and round. Yeah, being a newcomer as well, like for myself, I'm just riding a super stop bike, but I'm doing the, the super bike in the senior race as well. But like I say, as a newcomer, I can go out in the 650 practice, I can go out in the super sport practice. So for the first week, I've only got the Sunday off. I, I literally ride Saturday to Friday with the Sunday off and then race the next Saturday as well. So it's just going to be riding every day and uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Would you guys get together in a car and go around together or do you want to just do it on your own or... We did a lap yesterday, didn't we, all together? And uh, when I first came over a few weeks ago now, me, me and Danny ended up coming over at the same time and we did all our laps together, didn't we, with about 10 laps in two days. Uh, expectations for you, Martin? What would you like to achieve at the TT this year? Um, obviously, just have a safe ride, you know. My expectations between, the, you know, between even getting on the bike, I need, there's a lot more I need to, homework I need to do. And then... Um, yeah, I've got some expectations, but I'll keep them to myself. That's fair enough, yeah. Uh, lots of guys Twitter in saying, wishing you the best of luck to stay safe, enjoy it, uh, if you can. Uh, but unfortunately, we've run out of time for now. But ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Good luck to Martin, Peter, and Danny. Thanks. Thanks, please. Cheers. Nice to see you too, yeah. Thanks, mate. All the best. They left the drinks. He'll have to drink it. not old enough, Danny, is he? Yeah, he is old enough. He doesn't look it, but he is. It's like 13 or something. Ladies and gentlemen, how are, you, are you having a good evening? Say yes. We're almost at the end of the evening. Say boo. But before we go, we're going to wheel out the big guns. Last year, how much entertainment did they bring us? They fought together as teammates. It's different this year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with 27 wins, 54 podiums, five out of seven lap records and four out of six race records between them. It's John McGuinness and Michael Dunlop. I want to go, I want to <laughs> I, I, wanna, I, I think, John, that's the first time you're going to say to uh, Michael, you can go first. <laughs> grab a mic, gents. Grab a mic. So the whole must, world they must be you. paying you two too much because it's freezing down there. Is it? It's lovely up they here. Don't, they haven't switched the heaters on down there. <laughs> All right, OK. Hey, hey, gents, before we chat, uh, a little bit of a surprise, that, well, maybe... Uh, I think you know about it, but you've never received it. Last year, no one scored more points in... Is that Inel? No. Pardon? Inel? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, okay. Family Ten show. Five. Ten minutes. You can do it. But this is great news for you. This is great news for you, Michael. Uh, last year, no one scored more points than you in the road race rankings, which means you were the winner of the 2013 Jeff Duke Award. You've never received it. We're going to present it to you now. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Peter Duke to give Michael the award. Peter. Uh, 
I hope you didn't come just hand luggage. I did tell them that was a bad idea, given one an award and not the other. Uh, but, uh, John, I do have a job for you, actually, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, earlier on, that's all right, hold that a sec. Um, earlier on, we mentioned this amazing prize. So, uh, one winner, two tickets, VIP hospitality to the TT races, the best seats. You go around in the courtesy car, you get to chat and meet these guys as well. Let's find out who the winner is. Please get your tickets out. The, the, the number's at the back of the stubs. John, the winner, please. <laughs> we haven't got any money. Can't switch the heating on, so I'm not going to switch the lights on. The winner of this fantastic prize is... It's a load of, num it's a load of letters. E capital E-N-N. -N. What is that? Is that a Q? I think that's the code for the... Is that the code that's for the a ticket? ticket? Yeah. That's the ticket. That's the ticket. Eh, no, no. They said it was zero, a three SW14. E double N, zero, SW14. Right, someone should have that ticket here tonight, and you've got yourself about two and a half thousand pounds worth of hospitality. There we have a win. Is that you, sir? I tell you I what. I can't see. Is that you? Congratulations, my man. Superb. Enjoy. That's two tickets to the VIP hospitality. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> tell you what. Check, check his ticket. I recognise his image. He's a cheat. He is. <laughs> Enjoy it anyway. John, 200 quid for it. That's the ticket. We'll check it out a little bit later on. Right, John. How are you? How is it? You weren't carting today, but is it getting stronger? <laughs> that, your arm I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of that going on. Uh, it, it feels better as the days go by, to be honest. When I, I uh, hit that boulder in the Lake District five, five weeks ago, and... Uh, you know, I know I'm a fat kid, but uh, I was never going to move a 60 million year old rock that had been there since dinosaurs were walking around. I just straight into it and I was laid on the floor and uh, I couldn't breathe. I just thought it's the end of my season completely. And, uh, you know, the only thing I was screaming at myself was I was going to miss the TT and, you know, this great event. And, uh, you know, I was in a bad, bad way. You know, I had a couple of weeks, couldn't really sleep and I was shitting blood and I was in a bit of a mess, to be honest. And, uh, it's only the last couple of weeks, really, or maybe this last week where I've, the motivation's come back and, uh, you know, seeing the boys today tearing around on the car, so I was so jealous, it looked like they were having a great time. Uh, you know, these boys, it was just, but now enthusiasm's back, you know, the, the cast come off yesterday, it was four weeks, the cast on since the operation, and, uh, you know, I've got a couple of screws in there, grip's coming back, just need a, a little bit more range and uh, grip my teeth and be a proper hard northerner and hopefully they'll be on the grid. Are you going to any other, you having a hyperbaric chamber or doing any of the other voodoo-y stuff? Or are you just letting it heal on its own? Well, I don't, I don't know. I've been told about this, these amazing hyperbaric chambers and things like that, but I just think it's a lot of bollocks, to be fair. I think <laughs> sat, sat in a chamber breathing oxygen is not... I think Mother Nature will take over and, you know, and I'll have to... I'm a bit old school and, you know, it'll fix, I'm sure. I was chatting with a uh, lad who was actually out with you riding. He said it looked, uh, it looked a horrendous crash. He said he thought it was going to be worse than a broken wrist. It felt like it. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, I've had a lot of tumbles at short circuit level and, you know, I broke my leg, I broke bones in my feet and collarbones and bits and pieces and I broke my left scaphoid in 98, but this was by far the worst crash I've ever had. I, I bumped uh, my testicles, I bumped my left and right elbows on my leg, I shattered my knee brace in half, I cracked my helmet in half, I was... I thought I broke my jaw, which would definitely be a good thing because I'm trying to lose a bit of weight with that. <laughs> uh, and uh, like I say, I don't know, I just went from 30 miles an hour to nothing and I was stressing a little bit. I couldn't breathe and I thought I'd done some damage to my lungs and, you know, you know, big old fella like myself going from 30 miles an hour to nothing, it was uh, not a nice experience and it wasn't. It was pretty stressful for a while, but, uh, you know, I'm repairing. You know, we're still uh, six weeks before TT. So shows the friendship as well. I believe you were the first one to text to see how he was doing. Is that right? It was. No. <laughs> <laughs> I read that wrong. Don't. Uh, I did. A, a, the worst thing I, I, I wanted to text someone. <laughs> I thought he'd be laughing at him. I thought he'd maybe think uh, that kid thinks that uh, I'm out of the TT. I'll get to <laughs> get the sort of bike race easier. But no, uh, you know, it's, it's not great to see John. I guess here, you know, and. Uh, I think he'd be back strong as ever, you know, he knows where he's going around the TT and uh, I just want to see him back on the big bike and see what happens. 
How's, how's the new bike, Michael? Have you been doing some testing with BSB, the BSB boys? And are you racing at Brands Hatch next week? Yeah, I'm going down with the, the superstars of BSB road racing and uh, get the sunglasses out and a bit of hair gel and <laughs> t talk about them. I'll tell you what, you're going to fit right in, no problem. That's what I was going to say, and uh, I got a bit of a debrief. I'm not allowed to say certain words when I'm up here, but uh, I'm going to <laughs> go down and have a sausage fest, as you would call it, and... Uh, That'll be a bit of fun. You'll have to borrow the big motorhome, maybe. Can you lend it, borrow your motorhome, John? Mm, yeah, it's about five grand a weekend for a motorhome like mine. Can you fancy that? BMW will pay for that. Oh, got that's to say, oh, the wages I'm getting, that's, that's nothing, John. <laughs> <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell he's arrived. I was in Ireland last week. Brand new white V8 M3, number plate, Dunlop. I was like that. Oh, he's arrived now. He's hit the jackpot. You hit that, don't I'm you? I'm like that. Nice. Nice and free, Michael. How's your CRV, he says. <laughs> like in family vehicle. Your freaking stupid CRV that <laughs> you have to give back at the end of the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, feel, I'm feeling good here, I think, I'll, I have think, a fifth, I'll have a 50 quid bet we'll find this M3 and head you upside down before the end of the year, though. <laughs> Maybe looking at the end that CRV before it's all over. Ah, sure. Good. I think good you're going to have to go and sit in the middle. In a um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. I think that's, this is the reason we all like to watch you and to, uh, to hear you and to watch you race as well. This year just gets more and more, more exciting. Uh, you achieved so much last year. What, I suppose the big thing you want to do this year is get the six wins. How achievable is that with different bikes? Yeah, it's achievable. It's just they've got to all stay together. You know, I mean, it's last year uh, everyone went well, engines lasted. Uh, I was riding not too bad myself and everyone just sort of clicked together and uh, to do six in a week, you know, you can't come say, oh, i do six in a week. If I come back and win another one, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy, you know, and uh, especially riding this big girl here, nobody knows what it's able to do and um, I've done it for a challenge, I think, you know, nobody else was stupid enough to go off one and four TTs and go and pick a motorbike It's never been ridden down the road again, so, uh, but it's something different, you know what I mean, and uh, It'll be all right. I'll, I'll go round round circles, but six races will be a big ask, but I'm there to do it, and I think I'm capable of it. Do you think the BM's a bit of an unknown quantity at that kind of pace round here? Yeah, of course. Nobody's really stuck a big bike round at, that, at any speed at all, it, it, BMW-wise. You know, they've, they've been round at 126, 7, 8. I'm not, not 100% sure, but, you know, the actual factory hasn't been here in 75 years, so uh, I think it's going to be a big ask, but, as I say, it's... You know, they're all the same. They've got wheels in an engine. They should be all right, you know. And uh, let's see, if we, there's only one way to find out: is first night of practice. <laughs> so that'll be grand. John, have you took a lap this weekend or this week? Uh, yeah, I did actually. I took a lap round today with the family on the way to Jerby to the karting and dropped back on the track and had a look round. Yeah, it was nice. It was uh, sun was shining and uh, a little bit of resurfacing here, there, and everywhere. So it looks like the circuit could be a little bit faster. Uh, it's very unusual, I do ride around. When I come to races, I don't bother driving around. I just, you know, get on the bike and go because uh, I don't particularly like looking at some of the obstacles you can hit. <laughs> Sometimes when, you, when you're on the bike, you don't see them, but when you're in the car, you're like, geez, I want to hit that wall or this tree. So I just get on the bike and go. But yeah, it was a nice day today. I enjoyed it. Does it get I, your nerves tingling again, just having a quick look around? Yeah, I mean, I just, I love this place. You know, first time I come was... What would it be, 30 odd years ago, 32 years ago or something, when I was 10 years old and 42 tomorrow, by the way, old man. So it's, uh, I'm actually younger than Michael Dun uh, Rutter. I know Michael Ru Dunlop, uh, sorry, Michael Rutter looks 10 years older than me, but he's actually two, two days younger than me, he's old Rutter. So, but yeah, old codger tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I got the nerves jangling a little bit, you know, I got the enthusiasm back, buzzing again. And, uh, you know, after the injury, I felt pretty dejected for a few weeks but coming back and uh, driving around the track it's definitely got the old uh, and watching that little clip at the start that was pretty special so uh, it's going to be going to be great i'm thinking that the broken wrist possibly hasn't upset your intense physical training regime <laughs> before the the tt and, and what i'm saying is in that respect you probably uh, or you're likely to turn up the tt with a, a, a good mindset it's not going to knock you back so much is it I, just, I, I, I don't really know, to be absolutely brutally honest. I mean, my head's completely focused on riding my bike. And, I'm, you know, I'm, in my own head, I'm going to be 100% fit and, and ready to go. But, you know, when I take the cast off and, and look at it, it looks pretty average and some funny shapes and stuff. So it's, uh, 
you know, I'm, I, I don't really know. I, I, I can't, uh, like I say, I just feel like I, if I don't, I've let everybody down, my sponsors down, everybody down, you know. But uh, like I say, going back to the, the training, you know, I'm, I can't stand looking at myself in the mirror in the gym, you know what I mean? I like to get out, I'm enduro bike, motocross bike, mini bikes, and, you know, the split second before I hit the, the, ball at the boulder, I was out with my friends having a real good time. I was in a good world, everything, you know, the bike's ready to go, the team's ready to go, everything, all the whole package is there, and, you know, support from the family, friends, sponsors, everybody's still involved, and, you know, when I hit the rock, it just my world ended completely, but uh, we'll have to, you know, I, I know my way around here, like you say, it's uh, just a case of getting the leathers on, and if it's strong enough, I'll, I'll have a real good go, and if it's not, I'll, I'll have to come back another year. I'll have to. As someone's just put on Twitter that it's like Rocky and Apollo Creed on the sofa. <laughs> it was, it was the who? Second who, time yeah. round, ring the bell, it doesn't say, the band is awesome, they're all talking about the machines that you'd be riding. Um, one of the things on here is about, um, I know we talked about some of the goals you want to achieve this year, one of them is obviously the super sport getting faster. What's amazing, how do you find the extra speed around the, the, the course? Is it just the tiniest little measures you need to find from last year? Do you know what you need to do different this year? Yeah, there's some of the sections you just hold your eyes closed for another couple of seconds and <laughs> <laughs> then wake up before you get in. There's just silly things, you know, you just be different things, you know, and the biggest thing about the super sport bike is it's probably the most committed bike that you'll ride around the TT at a high speed, you know, you, the shutter bikes, don't get me wrong, you're committed, but the 600, you're on the edge of the tyre all the time. You're using every inch of the road. If shutter bike, if you, you just don't maybe use, well, I have a few times, but sometimes you don't just go over that white line. The 600, you're on the white line everywhere. You're, you're using your apex as you got to run through it, and you've got to really, really hold your momentum. And uh, for some reason, it suits me. You know, uh, Did TT you see with the front wheel locked up going into the bungalow? You're talking a lot of shite. <laughs> And not do. There was ten, there was ten grand in that there. Thirty mile an hour. There was ten grand in that. What on the lock? On, on the on the bonus. And Bruce was down there. He was a fucking. He was. I won't get out of bed for ten grand. <laughs> what? I won't get out of bed for ten grand. <laughs> that, that is true. He if I, he's got more money on his helmet <laughs> than fucking. There's no room no. on that, baby. <laughs> the only. Fucking chlamydia down there. <laughs> there a few, there's a few spots on that helmet. Uh, <laughs> fucking, you've they got said, something they, too they, desperate they, one to cure. They said this might happen. I'm probably gonna, not going to help things now, but this, one of the themes on Twitter is about a 132 mile an hour lap, and who's going to get it first? <laughs> that's, that's about one side. <laughs> <laughs> that's my mum. Did you give her that I don't 10 know. grand? <laughs> First of all, though, it must be possible. Confident you can do it? I mean, John, I know your mind's on other things at the moment, getting fit and all the rest of it, but it must be... Definitely possible, for sure. You know, I mean, I did 131.6 in the last lap of the Formula One race. I call it the Formula One race, our first superbike race. And uh, I did get held up quite a few times by, I wouldn't say slow riders, other riders on track that got, uh, you know... I, I, I couldn't can, can be out there, you know, it's not their fault, but I got, did get held up a couple of times and, and uh, you know, I was in the Joey Dunlop colours and uh, I needed to do some, something, you know, I, I was asleep at the start, it was like I was off to the shop to buy a paper, I was shocking on the first lap and you now these boys come steaming through, so I needed to do something on the last lap and I did 131.6 and I think, you know, for sure 132 is on the cards and uh, I don't think uh, it will just be me doing it or Michael doing it, I think Gary will be doing it, I think Hilton and James will be doing it and I think William will be doing it. I think, you know, Hutchie will be doing it. I think there'll be quite a few boys in this room will be doing it. So it's going to be, it's going to be an incre incredible race, I'm sure. Michael doesn't know much about his bike because it's new to him. But has yours changed a great deal? You've kind of the Honda really hasn't changed a massive amount because you've had something that works underneath you. Has have they changed much this year? Uh, it's a new bike. It's a brand new machine because it's uh, they brought the new SP out, so it's got a silver frame. So, <laughs> It's got a black frame, it's got a silver frame. Uh, but it's a, it's a good solid package, you know. The, the, the actual super stock bike is a new bike and it's got a little bit more power, the SP. And, and to see what, like Hutchie did in 010, over 130 mile an hour in stock, and then what this fucking lunatic did on it in, in 2013 was just unbelievable. I mean, you know, without blowing smoke up his ass when he passed me, 
at the end of the Kronk of Odia, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed how fast you could actually ride a machine with a keen ignition. It was just unbelievable, you know. Uh, you know, a bike can go to the shop and buy, and buy, you know, just incredible that time. So, yeah, it was a new super stocker. 600s, again, same, but Clive Padgett's working around the clock, you know, with new Valvoline sponsorship. Clive's jumping through hoops, you know, and, you know, just talking to Clive the other day when they launched the bikes out. out of the last 20 starts we've had, we've had 17 podiums, two fourths and a fifth. So it's a good, strong team and a good package around us for me and Bruce. So, yeah, it's going to be gonna feel a few little tweaks and changes, but, you know, nothing's broken at the moment, so we can't really fix it. You know, it's still a good all-round thing for us. Guys, thank you so much. I think everyone in the room around the world uh, and everyone in the racing fraternity want to see you both racing each other uh, this year. So, John, get... Better soon, I know you'd uh, like to... John, if anybody's looking for John, he's standing down at the podium. He's been there all day waving at people, so... <laughs> I, I don't know whether that's his, his ego. I, I think when John retires, I said to Paul Phillips, I said, when John retired, we were in the pit lane yesterday and John was standing there and he, he's just loving it. You know, he just, he just loves Isle of Man and you just see him and he's just... Nobody there, he's just sitting waving away and I just thought... <laughs> he's, he's just calling that arm down. That's what, uh, it that's what I'm saying. And I think that broken wrist has done him a favour, so he can just he can put it. Yes. <laughs> but no, know, I think when he retires, that's the salute you were doing to your new your new boss. You know what that means. I was nearly. I was nearly. <laughs> I was nearly, nearly going to have to grow a James Hallier when I come up here. <laughs> but and, but John's going to sit in the podium, you know, when it's, and, when he retires, and he's going to just sit there, <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> Remember me, it's me. Shameless, shameless plug as well. If you look on your tables, there's some stamp collections on there. So when you do grow up and you get one or two more wins, you can have your own stamp. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody seems to be in your side. Yeah, they, I tell they you saw what, my tower what, last year. What we'll do, because I don't know, I, I have no idea who's going to get the last word here. So what we'll do, we'll turn the mics off and you can carry on for a while if you're. But, but ladies and gentlemen, it's William Dunlop and John McGuinness. <laughs> they said it'd be worse than that. It's wonderful to see them both, and we look forward to seeing the racing. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for these two wonderful gentlemen, Steve and James. Thank you so much, guys. Brilliant. And that's it. There's not long to go. Thank you for being such a brilliant audience. It's been lovely to see you all. Thank you for supporting it. Enjoy the next couple of weeks. There's a real buzz around the place. There is 38 days to go. Thank you. Good night and God bless. Boys, thank you. color in your cheeks Do you ever get that fear that you can't shift the tide that sticks around like summer in your teeth Are there some aces up your sleeve Have you no idea that you're in deep I dreamt about you nearly every night this week How many secrets can you keep there's this tune I found that makes me think of you somehow And I play it on repeat Until I fall asleep Spilling drinks on my settee Do I wanna know If this feeling flows both ways Say tomorrow day